Honestly, Dave. As helped. long as gas, I, I mean, I'm not a, a, a world-renowned, educated person, but I, as long as <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where that was going, as long as and I like where you landed, as long as gas <laughs> exists, like they have unlimited money. On today's part of my take, we have Philadelphia 76ers George Niang, Iowa State star, in studio. Awesome interview with him. One of the coolest NBA guys we've ever had in studio. Uh, we have the Mount Rushmore of foods that start with the letter T. We have Firefest, and we're in the dog days. But I also saw something that said that we have six Saturdays till college football, so we're, we're getting there. I'm pretty sure it's like 48 days until NFL season starts. Yeah. NFL's so back. We're there. NFL's back. And we are brought to you by our friends at HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers fresh, quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week. So you can savor summer flavors right from home. Choose from 55-plus weekly options featuring pre-portioned, high-quality ingredients picked at peak ripeness. Select meals from the Taste of Summer series that are sure to become everyone's new favorites like the Old Bay Shrimp and Sausage Boil and family-style grilled steak lettuce wraps. Update your delivery address and enjoy HelloFresh at your vacation destination with just a click. Plans are flexible, so they work with your changing schedule Foolproof step-by-step recipes mean a joyful cooking experience and a stress-free summer. Plus, HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen with meals ready in around 30 minutes. I love HelloFresh. It's so great to cook at home. It's great to have a delicious home-cooked meal, and it's all given to you by HelloFresh. I tried their uh, grilled steak lettuce wraps. Perfect, perfect summer meal. So go to HelloFresh dot com slash pmt16 use code pmt1616 pmt16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts hellofresh.com slash pmt16 use code pmt16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts okay let's go Welcome to part of my take presented by HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash PMT16. That's PMT16. And you get 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Today is Friday, July 22nd. And did you guys see Steph? He roasted people. What he roasted Steph people on the ESPYs. Oh, yeah. Who could forget the ESPYs? Oh, yeah. So I, I did not tune in. Um, Same. Not for any reason other than the Takeys are next Wednesday and they're the greatest award show ever. And we actually just finished taping the Takeys. And I'll say it right now, best Takeys yet. Uh, but I watched, I saw some clips and everyone was like, this is where we're at in the sports calendar year. People were like, oh man, Steph roasted him. And it was literally just Steph being like, um, I, see, I see some Boston Celtics here. Maybe I'll let them wear my ring. Oh shit! Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, I didn't it was, watch. It was, it was nothing more than that. I didn't watch because I didn't care, and uh, I think I was I was proven right by the reaction to the ESPYS. The the only thing worse than watching the ESPYS is not watching the ESPYS and then caring about the ESPYS. Correct. And what happens during the ESPYS? Yeah, yeah. Like if you don't watch it and then you're mad about it online, you're a loser. Yes. Yeah. But speaking of that. We're not mad about something. We're just going to rectify something. Uh, like I said, the takeys are coming next Wednesday. I'm going to give you a little preview. The first takeys giving out right now. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Comeback player of the year. We're giving it to Trey Mancini. I think that's well deserved. He came back from cancer. I mean, who can top that? Yeah, he he was uh, beaten out by Clay Clay Thompson, who came back from an ACL. Trey Mancini came back from cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Did but he win a championship? What? I'm just kidding. The Orioles, they will. They're no, going to win the AL, yeah. 400 Hank's to 1. down for cancer? Again? Yeah, wow. Hank, yeah, Hank does not stand up for cancer. Hank stands stand up, up for cancer. You stand up for the anthem. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I That's do. it. That's it. Uh, but yeah, Trey Mancini, that is it. So, so print it, post it, Orioles fans. Trey Mancini has won the first takey of 2022. I wonder what the ratings are. So I, I'm going to kind of go back on what I said earlier about not caring about the ESPYs and then caring about them after the fact, I do want to see what I, I'm very curious to see what the ratings were on the ESPYs because I feel like when we were kids, the ESPYs 
it sounds stupid to say, but like they meant something, maybe. Well, yeah, but they didn't. They they actually never meant anything. No, everyone just thinks about Norm Macdonald yeah. doing the Espies, and that was awesome. That was great. He was making jokes in everyone's face, and now they just have Steph Curry, who I love Steph Curry, but he the jokes were just like. That was roasting. He looked at Grant Williams. He's like, maybe I'll let you wear my ring later. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn. And then there were Steph other, Curry. There were some other people that were mad about not getting invited to the ESPYs. Yeah. I saw that. I don't care. You should not care about getting invited to the ESPYs. No. I, would, I would actually hate to be invited to the ESPYs. Yeah, it looks hot. Really hot. And you have to sit. You have to buy a suit. You have to clap. I, saw, I did see Russell Wilson, a picture of Russell Wilson and Ciara walking out on stage. And... Um, when I when I text you phone emoji, mm -hmm. that means I'm dialed in. Dialed in. He was baby. dialed in. He was so. It dialed looked in. like he was wearing like the entire pants made out of a giant person's cummerbund. Mm. It was very funny. He had like Fashion, a two tone baby. thing going on. I'm a, I'm actually gonna give Russell Wilson credit. I think he's crossed the the uh, the line of like he's such a goober that it's it's fun now. I was thinking like, the about dialed that. in tweet was just like what what is this? I was thinking about that yesterday. He's he's dangerously close to crossing into. Um, Turn on tweet notifications territory. Yeah. Because, like, you never know what you're going to get with Russell Wilson. Dude. It's going to be extremely corny, but extremely funny. I didn't know he was dialed in like that. Yep. Uh, that's crazy. To bet on the Broncos. Um, all right, so the other things we have in the sports world. I Listen, say what you will about the Live Tour, but uh, them just, like, trying to get everyone in the entire world to join them is giving us some content. Charles Barkley is the name that everyone has floating out there. Um I will be pissed if they take him and he doesn't do anything else. But Charles Barkley, Charles Barkley, I mean, this isn't a shock because he actually, he tells the truth pretty much all the time. He was like, everyone's got relationships that if you dig into can be a little shady. Now, the Live Tour is a little more upfront about it. Mm -hmm. But Charles Barkley's taking the the uh, meeting with Greg Norman because he's like, why wouldn't I? And right. that's the most. That's the first time someone's had a human like reaction to the live tour, where it's like, no, I'm not saying that I I promote them. I'm not saying that I'm in. I'm taking a meeting. I'll take whatever. But he even talked about his Nike sponsorship. He's like, I'm a Nike guy. If you dig too much of that, yeah, there's sweatshops. Right. They do business with China. They Nobody's hands play. are clean. They should. Yeah, let they should. Them play. They should absolutely let and them give play. him a handicap. Wow, that would be incredible. I was thinking about the live tour and, and how everyone says it's a sports washing thing, right? The, the entire premise of the live tour through the public investment fund is to be like a giant commercial for Saudi Arabia. Like we're not that bad. Saudi Arabia, we play golf, right? It's been a gigantic failure on that respect because all anyone talks about is how bad Saudi Arabia Correct. is when the live tour comes up. Little Streisand effect. It's definitely the Streisand. Effect. I wasn't thinking about Saudi Arabia. And now I am. Yeah. So they've done a very poor job of using golf to spread soft power in that way because it's just it's making more people talk about it. Yeah. Like if you ask just a, a casual sports fan six months ago thoughts on Saudi Arabia they'd be like well, I don't know and now if you ask them they're like oh yeah I got thoughts yeah exactly so they, I, I think that's been a, a failure so far in fact you could say that every big name that goes over there they're actually doing a good job spreading the light as to how bad Saudi Arabia is right. by taking money Billy had a similar take they're stealing money from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, so they're actually oh, the good yeah. guys because it's less money for them. Exactly. If they give they it have back. unlimited money. Yeah, More they're like Charles Robin Parker. Hood. Yeah. No, but they're yeah. taking it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but they're, no, he, he, they're, they're, yeah, but they're taking it for a taking Everyone's it. got a limit. Yeah. If they hire all of us, then we get all of, all of their money. Honestly, Dave As helped. long as gas, I, I mean, I'm not a, a, a world renowned educated person but as long as <laughs> I was wondering where that was going as long as and I like where you landed as long as gas exists like they have unlimited money I thought you were going to be like yeah I'm not really up on geopolitical that's what I was things. going for no yeah. it was just world renowned educated person you never <laughs> you never say world renowned educated person and think of Hank <laughs> no but am I wrong no you're not you're not well, wrong they do have a lot of money they've got a lot of gas they got a lot of gas they got a lot of money yeah, so that's 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 basically, and then the other the other sports story that I had was um, it's it's official like change your uniform season because we had the Bengals with the with the all white uh, stripes helmets like a, a month ago. The Giants unveiled their throwbacks that they're going to be wearing, and I think the Cowboys also are going to wear the white helmet. Now, f for a couple games, I did like our friend Clem, our colleague Clem, who's a big time Giants fan. His analysis of the um, Giants using their throwback jerseys was spot on. He said it makes them slower, but stronger on defense and better tacklers. 
And I, I would say harder to tackle too. Yeah. It's yeah. got a little Ron Dane vibe too. Yeah, it. so so that's good. So if you're if you're trying to handicap it, just know that they're not gonna beat anyone at track meet, but they will be uh you know, sound on defense and play stronger. I think that the Bengals white helmets, it makes them faster on offense. Mm-hmm. They'll score like I think Joe Burrow will score uh, five passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns wearing those helmets, but special teams will be a liability. Yes. Kick coverage, especially, and kickoff returns. Yes. I don't see that working out well. And then the Cowboys helmet is just another cool helmet we get to watch the Cowboys blow a primetime game in. Yeah, it'll be like, oh, they have two receivers that kind of look in body type like Terrell Owens. Right, right. And, And maybe we get the actual benefit of Mike McCarthy after the game being like, I just blame the helmets mm-hmm. for that play call. Yeah, uh, I I did not like what the Giants did. I feel victimized. We should feel victimized as a podcast with the Giants did with their new uniforms. Um, they're wearing them two nights this year. Two nights, Big Cat. They're called Legacy Games. Ooh, Eli, another retirement. You know who they're playing in those Legacy Games? Ooh, Washington Football Team. The Commanders and the Bears. Oh, specifically, didn't know that they singled us out as a podcast. No, they absolutely did. And so we're on notice. We no. have to show up for those legacy games. Yeah, they were like, we gotta, we gotta win these legacy games. Here are the two teams we can beat. Yes, these are the two easiest teams on our schedule. Let me just look at the legacy Giants game. schedule. Giants schedule twenty twenty two. That's that's unfortunate because I assume these are either one of those games could be Thursday night games. Yeah, both give off Thursday night vibes. They're they're. I would assume they're home games, right? They have to wear these at home. Uh, Probably. Yeah, so let's just see. Let's so they have their this, this does suck. This does feel like we've been single. Yes, out. They, oh a hundred percent. Uh they do have the Panthers on September eighteenth. Oh no, that's the pre oh no, that's that's a regular season. Yeah. So they have the Panthers. You'd think okay. that maybe that, that would have been it was that bad because now we're we're worse than the Panthers. Yes. Yeah, that feels in the in the national mindset, I think if you say Washington Commanders versus Carolina Panthers, just in general. I'm not talking about this specific roster. I'm talking about just strictly based off vibes. I think the Panthers are like a little bit better than both of our teams. Yes, yes. All right, so I'm looking at right now Panthers, Cowboys, Bears, so that's smart by them. Ravens, they're definitely not beating them. Texans, they didn't do the Texans. At home? So this also probably, here's C, PFT, we're thinking about it the wrong way. Yes, it's probably because they want to win their legacy games, but they also chose like historic franchises. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't go up and get you can't do legacy game against the Texans. You can't do that. That's a that's a one o'clock kickoff that people are like on, on the red zone channel, like, oh shit, that game's going on. Also I feel like using the legacy, the oomph that you would get from having those throwback unis against the Texans would feel a little wasteful. Yeah. It's like we big time. We could have beaten the Texans without these. Yes. Like yes. this is just like they're a team that we're confident that we can win. We just want to make sure that we win. Yes, exactly. So uh anything else in sports? I don't I mean Yeah, yeah, the big news, contract news. Oh. Kyler Murray. Yes. Signed an extension. I think he got what, hundred sixty million yep. guaranteed. Uh, so that's happening. So Kyler Murray, I guess he's putting, probably refollowing them on Instagram now officially. You'd assume. I'd you like would him assume. for an unblock me so I can congratulate him. Yeah, I mean it's a lot of money. Right now, how much do you think they overpaid for Kyler Murray? How much was it again? I, is this now? Is, is this Schefter dollars? Jake five has the years, two thirty point five. Is that Schefter dollars? That is Schefter dollars. Run that through the yeah. guaranteed money conversion. Do we have a guaranteed money? I, I think it's one hundred sixty million. It's in that ballpark. Guaranteed. So it's, it's a lot of guaranteed money. Uh, I'm going to say it's overpaid. 160 guaranteed. I think they overpaid for him, too. I oh. really do. Also, they only offered Pat Tillman $9 million. Yeah, that's true. Um, Kyler is sick at Call of Duty, though. Yeah. Uh, isn't he like uh, 100 Thieves or something? Phase K? Phase, Phase K1. Clan. Okay. So, um, Jake, question or no, comment to you. Do you have in your calendar that we got to bet the Cardinals we in have September? Some, he, we have him as Mr. September October. Okay, great. Because mm-hmm. I actually, this is when fo- you know football's coming back. September eighth. I'm, 8th, I'm starting night. to think about my bets, and I literally said to to myself, like, I, no joke. I was walking to work, and I was like, I think I think Cardinals week one's gonna be my lock of the week. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So like, I'm getting into that mode where it's like, all right, what are we? What's the week one card looking like? I think that there are certain quarterbacks that you can do that. It's like they they're Kyler's engineered to be an early season guy. Ooh, yeah. Home against the Chiefs. It's a good I, game. Yeah, That's you a get great a great game. line, though. Yeah, good line. Yeah. Good track meet. And the Chiefs don't have yeah. Tyreek. Hopkins back. Yeah. So, wait, er, is he suspended for I can't HGH, remember. I think. Yeah. Some kind of something. Yeah, so he's definitely. I, I feel like Kyler's a good guy to bet on in September, October. 
Colt McCoy is a good quarterback to bet on for like one week in like, mid mid November. I was gonna say week fifteen. Yeah, mid like mid November, maybe late November. Yeah, that's that's Colt McCoy territory. Yes, yes, but that's it's exciting to have like the thought. Ooh, I wonder what my week one lock's gonna be, and have it not be that far away. I mean, mine's already the over in yeah. the first game. Yeah, Bills, Bills Rams. And Rams Sunday night football. That's gonna be fucking electric. God damn it, get here football. All right, let's do um, let's do our uh, our Mount Rushmore. And then we will do our uh, interview with George Nang, which was awesome, in studio. And then we'll wrap up with Firefest. Before we get to our Mount Rushmore, a word from our friends at Bird Dogs. I'm wearing my Bird Dogs right now. Now it's time to talk about our favorite in all men's fashion, Bird Dogs. Not only are Bird Dogs the perfect shorts for summer, they're also the most comfortable shorts. And it's not even close. I love the Bird Dogs shorts and uh, joggers the best. They're light, breathable, and super comfortable. They give you the freedom you need to go out and enjoy every second of summer. Not to mention, they go with pretty much everything. Like I said, I'm wearing my bird dog's pants right now. I wear my bird dog shorts on the weekends. If you're going to the beach, it has the most comfortable. It also, like, it's one of those one of those things where your bird dogs, they don't get wet for very long. Nice little wicking. Uh, it's not like you're wearing a bathing suit, but it does have that, you know, oh, I spilled the beer. Guess what? I'll be dry in 10 minutes. That's Bird Dogs. So go to birddogs.com, enter promo code PMT, and they'll throw in a free Bird Dogs tumbler. It's super premium insulated uh, drink vessel. Think like Yeti mug. They copied them exactly, and it's free. Yeti sells these things for 35 bucks, and you're getting a Bird Dogs tumbler for free when you use code PMT. That's birddogs.com, promo code PMT, and boom free bird dogs tumbler with your pair of bird dogs they're setting you up perfect for the summer check them out bird dogs best shorts best joggers ever bird dogs use code pmt free bird dogs tumbler with your order okay mount rushmore foods that start with t who's gonna start uh should well maybe we can pick the order since we won the last one well, oh, uh, us. well why don't we why don't we so pick yours you on the one before that well that's I'm just going off of your the precedent you guys sent last episode. <clears throat> did, did we pick the order last time? Yeah, we did. I don't think we did. I think you picked. No, the we ball did not. Yeah, no, we didn't. Pick we did the okay. balls. So, yeah. the ball so erroneous, erroneous. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Hank. Why don't you pick the ball first? Twelve. I feel like it's coming up. Okay, <laughs> Billy. 69. 69. All right, so we should go number. somewhere in the middle. Yeah, let's go with. Uh, Let's go 20, 20 35? Yeah, 35. Uh, 30, yeah, 35. It's going to be 21. 35. You, you know that be you guys keep giving us the best span numbers. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We haven't been winning. Oh, 18. 18. Wow. Congratulations, Hank. Thank you. So Hank. what's the order? Uh, let's go with us one. You guys second. Billy and Jake third. Okay. Interesting. There's... Uh, yeah, there's some there's some good foods here, but there's also it's a top heavy draft. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Tacos. Shit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> obvious one one. <laughs> obvious one one. That was the most obvious one one ever. Tacos rock. Yeah, tacos are the fucking best. I had Taco Bell for breakfast today. Great, oh, hell great yes. breakfast. God great damn. breakfast. Menu. Crunch wrap supreme. Fuck. Choke uh, me out with a leather leash and throw me into a volcano. Yes. God damn. I will. I will. I'm gonna put it on the list, but I'm gonna like support it. Like yeah, I agree. Bonk, but it was a, a justified bonk. Yeah. Can yeah. you repeat yeah. that again, just so like for the record? Uh, yeah. Ta uh, Crunchwrap Supreme breakfast. Crunchwrap Supreme from Taco Bell. I want it to choke me out with a dog collar on a leather leash, and then I want it to throw me into a real volcano. Nice. Hot. That's fire sauce. Yeah. They Boom. actually make fire <laughs> sauce straight from a volcano. <laughs> Yeah. That's how good it is. Imagine if they had lava in that. Peg me with a frozen popsicle made out of their their hot <laughs> Baja sauce. Blast. Yes. Yeah, Baja yes. Blast. There you go. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, we're going to go with our... We got the second pick. Yep. All right. We're going to go with... Uh, T-Bone. Fuck. T-Bone. Yeah. yeah. Man, BK, you really like T-Bone. Yeah. We should start calling, we should start calling you T-Bone. Yeah, T-Bone. That's tough. T Bone steaks are delicious. T Bone. It's all downhill for me. Yeah. Billy probably no, can't even name the no, dish. We're good. There are some cuts gems. Yeah, there's some good ones. Yeah, you get half gems. New York strip, you get half filet. Mm. So good. T Bone. Yeah. All right. Billy, you don't like meat? I thought we'd get away with that one. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, first, we're going to go turkey. 
Oh, okay. first. Okay. Mm, and interesting. Then, and then Billy? You know who the real turkey is? <laughs> Obama. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to go with tenderloin. Oh. Huh? All oh. right. What kind of tenderloin? Because you got pork, you got beef. Uh, beef tenderloin. So it's a B word. So <laughs> No, it's tenderloin, comma, beef. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's a worse cut of meat than the T-bone. Yes. Right, if that doesn't qualify. No, no, it qualifies. No, it's fine, it qualifies. Yeah. Okay. I just, we wanted him to, because maybe we'll take... Tenderloin, comma, pork. <laughs> Who knows? All right. PFT, I think we go with the third on that list. Yeah, yep. For yeah, sure. Third. Yeah. We're going to go with tortilla chips. Yeah. I love tortilla, tortilla chips. chips. Who you doesn't? Snack on them. Dip them. Queso. Mm, salsa. Guacamole. Oh, tortilla chips, baby. You guys going to have any? Oh, no, you can't. You can't have any tortilla chips with your tacos because we took them. That's too bad. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, no, nothing. Icy stare. Hint of lime. No, I'm, just, I'm, I'm reviewing our list. This is this is where it gets. This is where. Did you have tortilla chips? This is where champions get made. Yeah. Um, we will go with tomato soup. Ooh, oh, okay. A little gazpacho. Mm, little yeah. Wait, are you cheese and tomato soup? So Can you're talking about it? like the cream of tomato soup? The fuck other kind of tomato soup is well, there? Big Cat just said gazpacho. Yeah, it's a cold one. That's, that's what the fuck with, other kind of tomato soup there is. Yeah. That, that, well, wait, it's Mount Rushmore of tea. food that it's, starts with tea. It is a tomato so soup. So why yeah. the f would I be talking about gazpacho? Do you just censor yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the F. Okay, good pick. Tomato soup on a, on a cold day. Yeah. It's nothing better. And then we'll go with tortellini. Oh, Ooh, tortellini. Good pick. That's a good pick. Good pick. Good pick, Hank. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank all right, you. PFT. I think we go with our fourth Shout there, and then we save the yeah, last yeah. one. Yeah. Uh huh. So you want to say it, or you want me to say it? I'll say it. Uh, we're gonna go with Twix. Mm. Twix candy bar, delicious. Mm. You got delicious chocolate, Twix. caramel, cookie crisp. I think Twix is 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 the candy bar. Unlike any other, what we're like, I don't think anyone has Twix as their number one. But everyone has Twix in their top like three or four. Yes, you mm -hmm. know what I mean. Like it's the most consistent. Like no one, no one really bashes Twix. It shows up all the time. They're yeah. great it's a frozen too. Oh, so good. It's like a possession receiver. Yeah, nice right. Long, exactly. Nice long crunch. Not long crunch. Mm -hmm. Eight hundred yards out of them. Twix is is just a solid worker. You know what I like about Twix is it's it's about the size of a standard candy bar, but there are two of them. Yeah, that's the best part. Double the pleasure, double the fun. Mm -hmm. Do you are you a left Twix guy or right Twix guy? Uh, I go left first. First. Always. I actually don't know. I think I'd eat, but I, I like to bite both of them at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Just double fist. Sa I go savage twish, Twix style. All right. The boys, Jilly. All right. So this one has two words in it. I've heard it both ways. So hopefully you guys approve. Mm. Teriyaki chicken. Mm. I Google it. You guys are I, some, really, really some people going said borderline. Ter teriyaki some people said chicken teriyaki. Some people say teriyaki chicken. And teriyaki is like the seasoning. Yeah. And you already did the other one. I think it has to be. Seasoning, can, comma, teriyaki. I think I you can that's pick mess. teriyaki. That's a sauce. Yeah, you can put that's a food. You could pick teriyaki. I don't think you get teriyaki chicken, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So did you guys get tortilla chips? Yeah, mm -hmm. we did. We got tortilla chips. They're tortilla chips. They're a specific kind of chips. That's They're actually a good point by yeah, Billy. You, you actually get, are just getting tortillas. No, it's made you, from yeah, a tortilla. You get tortillas. Yeah. So yeah, you just made get, from a no, tortilla. No, no. If, but, but by not the teriyaki chips. chicken. Yeah, chips are made from the tortilla. What are you talking the about? The chicken. The chips are made from the tortilla. But it's, it's just we're talking about words here. But it's a, start I'm going to give them teriyaki chicken. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't you think that's tortilla chips. No, but I think tor tortilla chips are literally no, no, no. made from the tortilla. You know yeah, how but, they make but them, there's right? There's potato chips. Right. Yeah, we didn't take pee. potato chips. Right, but like tortilla chips. Yeah, we took the tortilla chips because they're it, made it, from tortilla. If we said so we took the teriyaki it, chicken because it's made it's, from teriyaki. It's made with teriyaki. No, it's made. It's not made from teriyaki. It's made with teriyaki. Yeah, but I'm back on their side. On whose? Yours. Yeah. Tortilla chips are made from tortillas. No, but tortilla chips are made with tortillas mm -hmm. and salt. No, they're made from tortillas. They're exactly, literally but it's just fried right, tortillas. Then we're yeah, they're fried so tortillas. No, no, no. Yes. no, you could take teriyaki. Teriyaki is a good pick. Teriyaki is not a food. Yeah, it's, it's not a sauce. food. It's, yeah, it's, it's not. It's a, it's a sauce and it's a style of cooking. Tequila? 
I say I, we give him. No, that's not a food. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, we wanted tequila so bad. It's not a food. All right, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll let I'll, you guys hear. We'll, we'll, we'll decide. Odds are even. PFT will watch behind me. You guys pick. Do you odds guys, are even for a no, lottery it's gonna, ball? Yeah, odds are even. No, no, no. There's a debate. We don't. No, no, that's fine. Odds are even for the lottery ball. What do you guys but want? But there are some restaurants that recognize it as yeah, teriyaki chicken. Yeah, odds are even. I've heard it. I think it's ways. a 50-50. Let's How do you yeah. order it, Jake? Oh, I order a chicken teriyaki. Yeah, so come on. Yeah. So, right, that's why I'm saying. Integrity. All right, so 50-50. So we won't actually, take it. Actually, teriyaki beef jerky. Oh, my God. You're doing no. the exact same thing just with <laughs> no beef jerky. Oh, damn, he got us there. <laughs> <laughs> also, that would not win over teriyaki chicken. Yeah, teriyaki chicken's delicious. All right, odds are even. We're going to leave it up to the machine. Even? You got one sure last. you don't want odd, Billy? Billy would have picked odds. Yeah. Billy, would you have picked odds? <laughs> it's numbers. I don't care. <laughs> oh, wow. Nihilist. Odd. All right. Wow. So we're, <laughs> that doesn't count. So, Billy, I'm going to overrule you here on this next one. I think a lot of people like it. Tater tots. Oh, good pick. Ooh, that's a great Thank fucking pick. Thank you, Billy. didn't want that one. Damn. You didn't Billy. want tater tots? You didn't want tater tots, Billy? Oh, no, no. Tater tots. I wanted How could you not want tater tots? I wanted teriyaki chicken over teriyaki. You, were you trying to do an entire keto Mount Rushmore? No, maybe. But <laughs> I don't know. Tater tots just never end up getting eaten. Oh, I what like are you talking pick. about? I, like I love them. Oh, thank you for vouching for a pick. Yes, that's yeah, a great a good pick. pick. You're, ta- you're trying to talk thank yourself you. out of it. I'm mad at, at ourselves for not coming up with tater tots. That's this almost worse than not picking Snape was a good guy the whole time. Yeah. You're Redemption. talking about tater tots like it's coleslaw. Yeah, tater no, tots no, but are We dominant. picked tater tots. I just would like chicken teriyaki over tater tots. That was the whole description. Right, so, tater tots yeah. are a great pick. One starts and with they a start tea, with tea, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, this if is you weird. don't have anything else, we're going with it. No, I got one. Oh God! <laughs> oh, no. I have no idea what this, this is. Going for what it's, worth. it's yeah. coming off the rip. <laughs> <laughs> Give us tuna t- sushi. Tuna okay. sushi. All Would right. you like to just have tuna? You could. I mean, Let's just go tuna's tuna. a good tuna. pick. Tuna. Yeah, tuna. Get, I had tuna on my list. Tuna. Tuna's a good pick. Tuna. You also get probably tuna salad along with yeah. that. Yeah, a lot of tuna. You get all the tuna. Tuna tartare. Tuna very tartare. Good tartare tuna uh-huh. sushi. The actual like eating a, a tuna fish. Tuna sashimi. Tuna yeah. sandwich. Tuna sandwich. That's a good. You guys got some good picks there mm-hmm. out of tuna, tuna steak. Out. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Somehow you guys talked yourselves into a good pick. Yeah. All right, our last pick. PFT, go ahead, take it away. So this is a pick that I think that if you look at the rest of the Mount Rushmore, you're going to need this one on anybody's list. Mm-hmm. Tums. Mm. Clean Tums. up with some Tums. Tums. Mm. Snack them down. Yep. Is that a food? Yeah. yeah Great you, question, you Billy. Great question. Is that a f- Billy asked it, not me. Is that a food but stuff? But it's a perfectly you eat valid it? Is that a food stuff? You that eat it. It's a food. What do you do with what, Tums? Wait, wait, wait. What aisle uh, is in the grocery store? What do you, what what do, you do with it? Who, 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 reg- who regulates? Answer the question. What aisle is Shut it in the fuck the up. Oh, store? What do you do with Tums? You medicate What do you do with medicine? What do you do with Advil? So Advil's a food. What do you do with Tums? No, it's different because you, you chew digest it. it. You digest it. Because you need it. it to get into your system. You chew it and you swallow it. No, that's a medicine, bro. You chew it. Mm. That's Tums. A medicine. Tums. That's Tums. a medicine. Tums. Great pick. We're on the do right you, side of history. Do you take Tums or do you eat Tums? I, I have a Tums is what I do. Yeah. do you, you, I eat them. No, hey, do you want to go take some Tums? No, what? I eat them. Is there any uh, restaurants that you can buy Tums at? Yeah. yeah. Do you take? It's not really? like food yeah. stuff. Where? I'm sure uh, a bunch of them. Uh, the subways that are attached to like a, a pilot gas station. That Tums is not a food stuff. It, it is food. You eat it. It is not a food stuff. Un, the FDA, what is which stuff? is food and drug. The fuck does food stuff uh, mean? Food stuff is how they classify. Wait, you know what's interesting? Getting from, contentious. I like You know what's it. interesting like about it. Tums is they have nutrition information. No, they don't. Yes, they, they do. Have, they, Sodium, five milligrams. Total no, carbohydrate, the, two grams. I'm going to go Sugar's grab the two Tums. grams. Dude, so does Advil. Dude, they... If they have, do they have a warning label? Do they have a warning label? I highly Does, doubt do, Tums does. Tums has right, a warning fine. label. You guys want to take it off? That's fine. Take it off. No, I think I think we do this PFT. We fucking switch it up on them with that bad boy. Ta- uh, by the way, Advil I don't think has a nutrition. Because it's only boy. it does. No, it just has acetaminophen. Okay. Yeah. 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 Tobacco leaves. Yeah. Tobacco. That tobacco is not a food tobacco. stuff. You chew it. You chew it up. That is not you a food stuff. Can, yeah. Which one do you want? I'll let you pick. You want you, us, you want to give us tobacco or you want to give no, us tums? No, this isn't a choice. This I'll is give just... you tobacco because that see, people are going to be like, this is the dumbest Mount Rushmore ever. No, for but you then they're going to vote Mount Rushmore for foods them. and you picking tobacco. 
No, you cannot. You can give us tobacco, Actually, Tums, or teriyaki chicken. I will. <laughs> I will let you guys choose tobacco if I'm going to go buy some Red Man and you have to eat it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Eat it. Swallow. Yep. Eat it. Yeah. I you, like that. Billy. If you can find Red Man in I, the next thirty minutes, then you're on. I have some at my desk. Oh, bring it in here. You've been right. holding yes. out on us. Yes. Get it, Billy. Should we just go, go with get this it? one? No. I just oh, keep going down the do you line. Do you want to eat it? All right, fine. Eat it. Yeah, we'll eat want, tobacco. Yeah, we'll eat But if yeah, you don't want that, it. we'll do our last pick. Fine, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll cancel both of them. Okay. Our last pick is Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> we had all these on our list. Yeah, we had all these on our list. What do you? What? Which one do you guys want us to take? Taco I know Bell. One go get the Taco Bell. Yeah, you know. Billy, go get the Red Man. It's Taco okay, Bell. Yeah, I mean, Taco Bell's the incident. No, it's not. It's a restaurant. No, Billy, go get the red man. I'm not gonna make you swallow the red go man. Go, I Why? want to. You Billy, to yeah, you eat. don't. You definitely don't Billy. have it. Go get it. He called my bluff. He called yeah. my bluff. Yeah. 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 You're yeah. such a fucking liar. I have some on my desk. So we have Taco Bell. <laughs> What's our pick? Taco Bell, tobacco. Tom's and tobacco. It sounds like a great Saturday, dude. That's perfect. Yeah. Give him. I'll give him tobacco slash Tums. I don't care. Yeah, you can. Tums and tobacco. Just, right. you, just put tobacco. that on you the graphic. You guys have no integrity for on Mount Rushmore. On the graphic, <laughs> just, put, <laughs> you have it. just put cheating for the graphic. This is what Mount Rushmore season's about, though. I know. It's Every, about yeah, arguing about you... the dumbest things possible Every... in the middle of July. I suppose so. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely what it's supposed to be about. <laughs> A lot of pressure on you guys for your last pick. Yeah. We just Not took really. tobacco, just Tums, pure, and Taco Bell. Pure domination. <laughs> um... So we got tacos, delicious, tomato soup, great soup. Oh, you didn't say delicious? What was our third pick? Our, hmm? Tortellini. Tortellini. So we have we have a, a broad variety. That's a great meal. That's a great meal in general. If you have a meal with ta tacos, tomato soup, tortellini, you're eating good. It's like the Jimmy V speech. Yeah. For dessert, <laughs> tiramisu. Okay. Uh, yeah, good pick. We had, we had tiramisu yeah, also. I don't like it. it, it yeah. Right, give me a twist. You? I, yeah, me. I don't like tiramisu. That says something. You just you isn't just it walked, like coffee you related? Just, you just walked into that trap, Hank. I'm the man who will eat every dessert in the world. Tiramisu is bottom tier dessert. It's all fancy. <laughs> what? It's too yeah, it's it's fancy. It's, it's uh, good this, though. That. I, I agree no, 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 with the no. price, no. but it's delicious. Give me ice cream. Give me Twix. Give me fucking gummy bears. Give me cookies. Yeah, but some restaurants cake. don't have those options. Give me ice cream cake. Yeah, some they nice restaurants they only have like it's like a, a shitty like. Pumpkin cake or tiramisu? No, tiramisu that's not is true. Tir no. Super consistent. No, no, no. It's, it's not delicious. consistent. Uh, it, it, you no. can say you can say that tiramisu is good when it's cooked well. It's delicious, but when it's bad, it's really bad. I w I would actually put tres leches cake above tiramisu. Mm -hmm. I'd put with a tea. souffle over that tiramisu. That start with a tea. I would and also take ice cream over tiramisu. <laughs> I I thought that's what we were talking about. Yeah. Um. I just. If you look at any nice restaurant, you go, tiramisu is on the menu for desserts. I guarantee you they have some type of ice cream, apple pie, like brownie. They're all better. They're all better. I think tiramisu That's probably is not also wrong, the main dessert. With tea. I, the have main a, dessert I have a, we have a complete with list. With your table. You're like, let's get a tiramisu and then let's order some other stuff that we actually want to have all of. Yeah, fair. I'll take a bite of tiramisu. People say that all the time. Like, can I just have one bite of your tiramisu? I don't like so the the, the taste of tiramisu the isn't cinnamon? bad. It's the it's the texture that I don't like. I don't like the texture of tiramisu. I don't mind it, but if it's cooked poorly, it's very bad. Okay, that was good. That was a very contentious Mount Rushmore. What do we have left off? Feels good to yell at each Turkey other. Turkey does it like over <laughs> over tea words. Tetrazzini. Oh wow, Billy, you missed a big one. Turkey tetrazzini. Testosterone. You can't eat that. <laughs> Maybe you can. It's like yeah, Tums. You, yeah, beta. beta. It's like Twizzlers tums. or tiramisu. Twizzlers. I love Twizzlers. We also had three Musketeers. Some people don't like that though. Um, would tapas have counted? Nope. No. I was no. thinking tequenos. See, here's the thing with tiramisu too. Hank. Would we have, if we had done tortilla soup, would that have counted? Yes. Yeah. Uh, tiramisu is coffee flavored. Just drink the coffee. It's way better. Get a get ice cream. And apple pie and have a cup of coffee. That's a dessert, baby. Get Tim, a little digestion going. Timbits. Mm, Timbits Tim are good. Ooh, uh, we had Triscuits. I like Triscuits. People have been slandering Triscuits. They're Wait, fine. Totino's yeah. pizza rolls count. Yeah. Ooh, we had those. We had those. Damn. I don't but know. If is that count. pizza yeah. rolls? Well, like, is that the brand or right. is that the yeah, food? I I, I would this is why I like no. doing these alphabet ones. What about yeah. really get you in a. What about Takis? Would Takis have counted? Yeah, we almost did Taquitos. Yeah. We almost just did all taco stuff, but like, would it have been a force if we did tacos, Taquitos, Taco Dip, and Taco Salad? 
Would have been fun. Yeah, he probably would have won. Yeah. Oh, unfortunately, yeah, not, not going to that. anymore. No, you're not going to win. Uh, tzatziki sauce. Yes, that's yeah. a good one too. That's a sauce. sauce, but it's great. you guys. You're Tabasco. Un- yeah. Tabasco. Yeah. Yeah. So we got it. Right. Titties. So we, we got titties. We. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, okay. We we got to do uh, the Mount Rushmore of like one letter sauces. Sure. Should we do sauces once? We've we done do sauces. sauces. But if we narrow it down, did, it when you box so- Actually, I think the sauce Mount Rushmore was the original contentious one. Yeah, this is when you box it into a letter, it it gets it gets spicy. Mm-hmm. I think we just unlocked a lot of Mount Rushmores we can do. Sauces with a B. Yeah, Buffalo. When barbecue? No, I beat you. Barbecuffalo. Bosniak. Bosniak. What's that? It's a great sauce. What? Is, that, is this that, another invention? Is, it a, is <laughs> that a person? Is that a ethnicity? Bosniak, <laughs> Bosniak sauce. It sounds like a, sounds like something involved in the communist revolution. Bosnian meatball sauce, Bosnian Bosn- sauce, Bosniak sauce. How do you spell it? Can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> bolognese, yeah. great. Oh, oh bolognese great sauce. sauce with a B. Oh, yeah. It's my favorite pasta. God damn Booby, it. Booby milk. Booby milk. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck bolognese. That's a great miss. Well, it wasn't a miss. What? For the tea. Oh, yeah. One of my... Yeah. Yeah. Now, Bosnia got me all <laughs> we got fucked lo- up. We got lost. This. What is Bosnia? Yeah, Bosnia sauce, just, just threw me in a spiral. Where you don't know. You just can't said a word it. and just <laughs> thought we'd be like, yeah, okay. What is Bosnia? Bosnia. <laughs> I should have picked bolognese. I'm, right now, I'm stuck in a... <laughs> I'm stuck in a back and forth on Google where it says, did you mean Bosniak sauce? Yeah. Yes. And then he goes to that page and says, did you mean Bosniak sauce? I click it again. Bos, uh, how do you say Bosniak? Or did you mean bisque? Oh, is this from the Balkans? Yeah, This dude. is from Bosnia? Yeah, you haven't had it? What gave it away? Bosniak chicken. What it was right there if we were doing the bees. Bosniak. Mm. All right. Um, great Mount Rushmore. I had fun with that, boys. That felt, felt good to have a little disagreement. It is. They're like... If you, if Mount Rushmore at its core is you got to just find the dumbest thing to argue about with your friends in the middle of the summer. You just described Congress. Yeah, right. It's a, this is what we this is what we get up while we lift all them dim weights. Um, all right, let's get to our interview. We got George Yang in studio. Uh, Billy, you have a quick word from one of our sponsors. I do. Well, we live in a land of junk sleep. When there's always one more deadline to meet, one more episode to watch, one more meme to post in the group chat, you can get junk sleep. Now, the answer to junk sleep, Mattress Firm wants you to know that junk sleep is what you get from sleeping on a bed that isn't right for you. Junk sleep leaves you feeling exhausted and out of it. America needs real sleep, the kind you get from a bed that actually matches you and your sleep preferences. At Mattress Firm, you can speak with a highly trained sleep expert who will match you with the best mattresses and sleep products for you. Only Mattress Firm has sleep experts with 200 hours of training to ensure that you get matched with the right bed for you. With Mattress Matcher, only Mattress Firm has the technology to get you the right bed with a few easy questions. Because with junk sleep, you're in no condition to handle anything more. Mattress Firm guarantees that we'll find the right bed for you at the right price with our low price guarantee. We'll even let you try it for 120 nights to be sure. To unjunk your sleep, go to MattressFirm.com or a Mattress Firm store today and speak with a sleep expert. And here's George Nyang. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest in studio. Philadelphia 76ers, George Niang. Thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. Yeah. Um, we're only gonna ask like four Ben Simmons questions. Dang, we're not we're not over that yet. Oh, we, we have more. We could do all of them. Yeah, you wanna, <laughs> do you yeah. wanna ask us a Ben Simmons question? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why don't oh, you he's ask in New us? York now? Right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 Good question. Yeah. Yes, he yeah. is in yes. Brooklyn. Yes. Correct. How do you guys feel? How do you guys feel about him? Uh I feel strongly about him. Yeah. In many many types of ways. Are you going to get into detail? Or are you I, just going to give me the half? Well, no. Like answer? we've said on the show before that if if there was no basket, he would be the best basketball player in the league. Elite, yes. elite passer, incredible, yeah. elite defender, incredible. Do you still talk to him at all? No. So I was never really like close. I don't even. Oh yeah, know because if I had his you, phone number. you showed up at the 76ers yeah. when he yeah. said he w- didn't want to play for them anymore. Yeah. Awkward. Yeah, that is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we'll go with easier question. Um, how sick is Joel Embiid because he's just a monster? Oh, dude. He's, like, and I don't even think he knows, like, how good he can be. Like, because when he, like, gets angry and, like, is dominant, like, there's been a couple of times where he's had, like, 50, 46, 37. 
And you know, and he says, "I'm not even trying." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I I went to a game uh, a few years ago. I can't remember. It was it was I think it was the Rockets. It was actually James Harden was playing the Rockets still versus the Sixers, and I remember just watching him down low and like putting it off the glide. Like the ball looks like a he's playing with like a little tiny ball. Yeah, next to his body, and he just like controls everything. And people forget, like usually big men, like now in this day and age, like it's easy to double team and like. People are double teaming, triple teaming him, and he's like shooting mid range jumpers over them, going by him, dunking on him. So I mean, I just think it's impressive. Obviously, I'm gonna I'm on the Joel Embiid campaign of why he didn't win MVP, but Yeah. It is mm-hmm. what it is. Yeah. Man. Do you uh, do you ever have to team up in practice? <laughs> no, that's not my position. I stay far away from <laughs> You stay from far that. away. You never have to double team? Yeah, no nah, whoa. Um <laughs> but uh no sometimes, but uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't say he's He's ultra competitive uh, in practice. I mean, he can glide through practice, but when he's on, like if we're practicing before the playoffs, I would say nobody's really touching him. Yeah. Can you tell going into a game if he's like if he's pissed off, if he's ready to go, like totally locked in, like nobody's gonna be able to stop this guy tonight? Um, you know, he probably gives us like a heads up, like a watch this. Uh huh. <laughs> and then, then you're like, yeah, yeah, all right, Joel. Yeah. He and looked then, awesome in the mask. I think he should wear the mask full time. Yes. You think so? Yes. I don't know how I could do something like that. You know what I mean? I'm I'm such a simple guy, but that would just like yeah. anno- annoy me. But he was a he is a beast, mask or no no mask. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He. I mean, his playoffs where he was just like every day was a different body part. He got injured and he was still out there. <laughs> um. So. Your your career is crazy, man. Like you're have yeah. you had a moment where you're like, I've I've not made it, but you got drafted in the second round. Yeah. A lot of second rounders don't make it in the NBA. That's yeah. just a fact. Yeah. You real. you were on you went to the G League, then you worked your way back. You know, you signed a few contracts here. Like that it's a hell of a story when you actually kind of piece it all together because there's a lot of guys they get drafted in the second round, either they don't make the team or they're on the team for a year. G League, they go over to Europe and then it's over. Yeah. No, I mean, it, I was looking the other day just for my own personal mind or benefit, and uh, I think it's like me and like three other guys that got drafted in the second round that are still in the NBA, and it's like Malcolm Brogdon, me, and then I want to say it's like Drake Lehman, who was my uh, AAU teammate. But, yeah, there I'm not going to lie to you and say that I thought it was all going to be easy. Like, I got cut from my first team in Indiana – and fucking I was like, did I just blow my only opportunity mm-hmm. in the NBA? And then you kind of go, you know, second year guys that get cut usually go to the G League and kind of fizzle out. But I kind of like sacrificed everything. Like I remember I was doing whatever anybody asked. They're like, you need to improve your body. I went vegan. You need to, you know, make more shots. I started doing like this 300 shot routine before practice and lifting every day. Like, And the biggest thing for me was just realizing that if I quit, it gave someone else an opportunity behind me to be one step closer. So I was like, fuck it. I'll just continue to eat shit and not quit. And whatever happens, like I can live with. If that's going overseas, then it's going overseas. But I, I know it's cliche and like corny as it sounds. Like you're probably like, oh, don't quit. No, like, this is, fuck it. no it's, it's uh, not at all. It was just like I just kept showing up every day, good, bad, or indifferent. If I felt like shit, felt great, I was just like, all right, I'm going to show up and do like these three things in my routine. And fucking it landed me in utah i never thought i'd be in utah and then four years later it landed me in philadelphia and that's kind of like this year was kind of like where my career kind of you know took off and people were like oh shit like he's a legit rotation yeah player. he can c- contribute to a team yeah. so was there a moment when you were doing all these things taking you know 300 shots for the game lifting vegan all that stuff yeah where you hit a moment where you're like i'm i'm way better now like i've i can see that i'm so much better you know, I don't think it's like a, a moment. I think it's like you, you you take time to look back at what you've done in like a small stint and you're like, damn, like I've been fucking good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, it was in the G League. I was like, damn, I'm good. And then I got signed to like a regular contract in the NBA and you're playing pickup with the guys and there's no like, you don't feel that like sense of nervousness. Like, how do I fit in? You're like, no, like I am one of them. Yeah. It's just I'm waiting for my opportunity, which is everything in the NBA because sometimes you have to wait behind guys who make more money than you and different shit like that. But I waited for my opportunity, and luckily, you know, Quinn Snyder, who sadly isn't the Utah Jazz yeah. coach anymore, but he gave me an opportunity, and I kind of just ran with it. That's Was there awesome. a moment where you started playing and you were like, uh, I, I think I can fit in this league? Like, yeah. Where, where it kind of clicked for you and you knew that you had a future? Um, so it was like, so I, I started at Utah, I got signed halfway through the year on that like new two-way contract, so you're down in the G League, and 
up with the team. And then the next year they signed me to like a, a deal. And uh, Quinn Snyder played me, I think it was like the second game of the season against Golden State. And I get into the game and I had had a good training camp, made, a, made some threes. In my first three, like I shoot off like the top of the backboard, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like this dude Westbrook. trusted me to be. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I'm sorry, you're gonna get sorry. us in trouble. Westbrook, Westbrook. Uh-huh. My bad. Uh, um, and uh, so I, I was like, "Damn!" And I'm running down the sideline, and Demarcus Cousins is like, "Man, hell no! Don't ever shoot no shit like that again." And I'm like damn it, like this is fucking gonna be brutal. This guy believed in me, put me in the game. Now I got DeMarcus Cousins talking shit to me. And luckily the ball came to me like another time I had a wide open three and I hit it. And that was kind of like the moment that was like the, all right, you made your first one. And then I ended up making a couple more throughout the game. We ended up losing to the Warriors, but it was like the confidence I needed and reassurance to be like, all right, you know, if I can do this against the defending champion Warriors, like I can do it against anybody. Yeah, the fact you did it after you, you know, shot... Yeah, the shot from hell the first yeah, time. Yeah, an oxygen ball, we back. like to call it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it also is now uh, it's become like um, a lot of the analysis in the NBA. People are like, "Oh, he got hunted on defense." Yeah. yeah. Do you have you been? Have, is there a moment where you were hunted? Oh yeah. I mean, how bad does that feel? Yeah, and I mean, I I don't want to bring race into it, but when you look like the slow white guy, that's kind of <laughs> like the the worst. Is when someone's like pointing at you and the other guy runs up and the guy's like no 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 him not him <laughs> him and if you're on the other end of that uh it's it sucks but i mean people don't understand is that if you're the guy in the action that's getting you're going at these are nba players like they're going to i don't care if it's the best defender they're going to score on you now if you're constantly getting scored on then you know you start to become the hunted but if mm-hmm. you can mix in a couple stops they usually just tend to leave you yeah, alone. Yeah, I actually uh JJ Reddick friend of friend of the show, he he uh had a point that I like kind of changed how I looked at it because I think there's a lot of people who are like the NBA they don't play defense. They don't like, you know, college they play defense. Like, no, the NBA just everyone's so fucking good that even if you're playing great defense, there's st- like you could play great defense and still against get Steph on, and he's yeah. still going to score 25-30. Yeah. So is that is that you think that's fair that the defense it's not the defense it's the fact that the offense and everyone can make a shot yeah believe me I'm I'm trying yeah and, and don't worry the guys on the offensive end in college they had to go to math class and science class and the NBA it's I'm in the gym four or five hours a day so those shots tend to go in you know a lot more and these are the best 450 players in the world yeah like these guys are paid a lot of money to make a lot of tough shots and. We're trying. Believe me, we're trying. But these fuckers They're good. are so good. Mm-hmm. Like, could you imagine guarding Kevin Durant? No. Like you, I'd like, him up because I just mentally just Are you just Oh, yeah, him I down. forgot. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll try break, to help you I'll out. I'll break him down. Yeah. You, th- you think we can get him on here? I'm, we've been trying. <laughs> we've been trying. That's I the feel way like to we've break been close him down. many times, but he's just alphaing me all the time. He does the... Um, he just has the scene on Instagram yeah. DMs. So he sees them all. It just never replies. Dang, we got to work on that. Yeah, can you help me? <laughs> I'll try. I'll see is there I... is there a hierarchy where like you can like in the NBA where it's like the stars only talk to the stars and like the other guys only uh, talk to the other guys? Nah, I wouldn't say that. You okay, know, I, I, don't, I would think sometimes superstars get a get sick of hanging out with other superstars. Just, yeah. There's too much e- ego in one room. Yeah, who only the, one ball. I was about to say, the room might blow up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. On, on that note, have you been invited to go out on the town with uh, with James Harden yet? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How close are you with James? Uh, you been in the champagne room? <laughs> that's my guy, man. That's my guy. He takes care of his people. Does he? He takes yeah. care of his people. No, he's a, James is a great dude, and I think... You know, a lot of people get caught up in like the whole strip club James and this, that, and the other. And I think if any other player, like when you have your downtime, like you like to enjoy life. Yeah. And like he said to me, I think he's 32. He said, I've, I've had 32 great years of life. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, James, I definitely believe you. I don't disagree <laughs> yes. with that one bit. How, how much though? Because the NBA is it, maybe it's weird that it's only feels like an only NBA problem where for some reason social media in the NBA like it's always every little mistake every everything is put on blast legacy talk like i actually kind of agree somewhat with KD when he's like why is every conversation about legacy or like who could beat this guy and right. put, like do, do you do you does anyone talk about that in the locker room or like they like this is so lame that every game is is now like 
you know, this is MJ would never do this. Yeah, or, yeah. No, people. I mean, people would be so surprised. Like the conversations that we have in the locker room are probably like so much more simpler than what people freaking think. Like nobody is comparing themselves to freaking MJ or Kareem and anything like that. Sure, we'll talk about guys that have come in the past, but nobody's doing that stupid like p pissing contest yeah, and see right. who's better. But I mean. I've sat down and watched some good arguments on Instagram Live on like whose legacy's here, and then you, you sit back and think about it, and you're like, huh, you, they might be right. It would actually be funny if you started that next year in the locker room, you just had like a big whiteboard at your locker, and like after every good Embiid game, you're like, legacy, Mark, like yeah. okay, you're a little bit higher. Or, or <laughs> is like equal to or greater yeah, than Hakeem yeah, Olajuwon. Yeah, he just keeps going up and down. Oh, that'd be just hilarious. Just so you know, Joel, this is where I got you right now hey, in legacy. I was going to say, you are you're you were top eight before this. You're top six <laughs> now, all right? You get me a championship, you'll be top three. This is get Bill MVP. Simmons' wet dream. Yeah. yeah, the MVP takes you to the next level of, you got to have like a pantheon. You, yeah. you reach pantheon level three. <laughs> I, I do think, though, that when you're having the legacy conversation, in a way, it's a compliment to the person because yeah. we don't talk about legacy conversations with nobody's right. Right, no, one hundred percent. So yeah. like it's it, in a weird way, it's it's a good thing that they're talking about you in that way. But then if you pay attention to the day to day of it, it's just like it's it's really just because they have nothing else to talk about. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Like it just it drags on because anybody can have an opinion because nobody will ever see. Joel against Akeem Elijah, or nobody will see this one's a good one. Ja Morant against Michael Jordan. Right? Yeah. Oh, who do you got? Nobody. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> ja, me too. No, cut it out. <laughs> like, think about who see, MJ this is, was you're playing the, against. He's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> you're the no, problem. We, are, we absolutely feed into it. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, like, we, we accidentally get into those conversations. That's the thing is like, as annoying as they can be, they also are kind of fun sometimes. So we'll like just accidentally be like, Oh, like what? What if it was like? I think we had the conversation. We were joking about MJ and Magic for Steph and LeBron, and we're like, "This is so stupid." And then, like ten minutes later, we're actually breaking it down. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got one for you guys to break down. Okay, it's not even in basketball. Ready? Yeah. Tom Brady uh -huh. or Zach Wilson? Mm. Mm. Like overall life, life legendary. Ooh. Uh, I mean, I think Tom Brady still got him. Well, Zach Wilson's good. He's going to go to heaven. <laughs> yeah, because he's his religion is correct. Yeah, but um, this life, Tom Brady, the afterlife, Zach Wilson. Yeah, <laughs> and Tom Brady definitely sold his soul to the devil too. Next ten years, maybe Zach Wilson. Maybe. Yeah, because he's got it all in front of him right now. Yeah, and there's a lot of cougars out there. There is. There's what? All right. So uh, let me ask this: We've we've had this discussion. If that story happens in the NBA locker room, like, are people like? That's kind of cool, dude. <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, no. One of my old teammates, Jordan Clarkson, would have been like, "Right on, bro." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because everyone's freaking out. It's like I'm pretty sure the locker room's gonna be fine with it. Yeah, <laughs> I, honestly, I had no. I heard it like I was out in Vegas for like NBA summer league, and I heard it, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah." Like I got a 16. Like I'm gonna stay. I didn't even think twice about hearing like the story. I was playing blackjack, and then like I got on the plane, and I was reading it, and I was like, "That his." Girl, his ex girlfriend, like, what an yeah idiot! For yeah. Like, keep your personal business, like, yeah, don't, don't, don't to get on Instagram comments. Yeah, like, yeah. you just blew that whole thing up. You would have been solid. Like, nobody needs to know that. And now could, everybody's back on this guy's. You side. can delete Instagram comments. Yeah. You could have just been like, homie hopper, delete, yeah. and it's over. Then <laughs> everything's gone. That's true. How nice is it being able to go out to Vegas and not have to play in the summer? Oh, league? dude, unreal. Because summer league, I mean, it's got to be very nerve-wracking. Oh, it's a grind. And, like, you're anxious all the time because you're, like, some of the older guys is like, hey, hey, 50 cents performing at Dre's, do you want to come? <laughs> I'm like, but I got shoot around at 9. He's like, yeah, we'll have you in by, like, 3. And then you're walking in your hotel at 7.30. My <laughs> job's on the line? And you're showing up shoot around like, no, I didn't go out last night. <laughs> oh, my God. I had a teammate that, uh, that just signed with the team, and uh, we went out to celebrate. And he literally missed like the shooter on bus like three days in a row after right that. After he and signed. they're like, we're kind of regretting signing <laughs> here right uh -huh. now. He's like, no, I won't do it again. <laughs> yeah, unless you sign me a new contract, <laughs> yeah, then I will exactly. do it again. Yeah. What's the summer league like in terms of pressure? Like, you're under a microscope, yeah. right? It's like every possession that you have, every touch that yeah. you have could determine millions of dollars. Right. I think you just have to have the mindset of uh, giving a fuck, but not actually giving a fuck. Uh, you know, I, I think. You just got to go out there and be you. Like, if you're out there trying to go out there and do something that you're not able to do, then 
you're not going to be good. Like my job was to play a little defense and and make threes, right? If I was out there trying to dribble the ball 17 times, I'd probably be in Yugoslavia right now. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So just stick to the basics, keep the main thing the main thing. But the toughest part is the outside distractions, which people don't give enough credit for. Like most professional athletes can do a good job of handling distractions and getting their shit done. Young professional athletes, that's where it goes a that's, little side. I would yeah. imagine that's a little yeah, tough. Like in your early 20s in Vegas with a little walking around money, oh. forget about it. Yeah, yeah, your per diem's like 2500 Yeah. Well, you know nice. what I did, 2500 Probably lost it within the 30 minutes I got it. Yeah. Um, on Doc Rivers, because we've talked about Doc on this show a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, does he ever have a voice? Or is it just like permanently hoarse? <laughs> have you ever heard him speak with like a full, <laughs> yeah. like full command of his voice box? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think sometimes it it, it peaks it peaks through, but no, I think that's just how he speaks. That's funny because I've never even really. Yeah, no, he. Can't. I can't imagine what his voice because I grew up a Boston kid, so like that's the only voice that I know. And mm-hmm. minus him yelling at Tyrese Maxey, I think. <laughs> That's just how his uh, his voice his is. voice just rolls out of bed like yeah, that. Yeah, um, exactly. All right, I want to talk about Iowa State real quick. So, couple questions. First, I read that you lost thirty pounds after your freshman year. How how bad were you eating? Oh, dude, <laughs> that's a lot of weight. I wish I had like a picture of like my cabinet. It was like Devil Dogs, Ring Dings, uh, Mac and Cheese, and I was eating like chicken fingers for pregame meal and you and you so you were playing at 260 and you were good yeah i remember we were in west virginia and i was with one of my teammates dustin hogue and there was a, a scale in the way in the in the locker room and he was like uh he got on he was like ah, 235 and i was like oh let me get on it read like 263 and he was like oh my god i gotta go tell everybody and i was like no <laughs> how were you like were you winded i mean here's the difference between college and the nba is like I was so skilled that I could get away with being like out of shape, overweight, and like still put up points because it was like I was touching the ball every time. Right. You know, I was so much more skilled than everybody else. But then when I tried to, you know, I lost that weight, and obviously your body fluctuates. You know, us big guys, you know, it's it's tough to just keep it there all the time. Then when you slowly start getting to the next level. You're like, damn, like I can't be overweight. I actually have to be in shape. I actually have to be conditioned well because. Those dudes are playing at like a whole nother speed, a whole nother athletic level. And uh, I don't blame my mom or my dad. I blame God for not giving me those athletic talents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that must have felt awesome when you lost 30 pounds. Oh, yeah. I mean, friggin' you you go from wearing baggy sweatshirts to putting your taking your shirt off all the time. Yeah. Right? So was it just salads? You just stopped eating junk food? or Yeah, was I would say, uh, I don't know if it was the healthiest. So any nutritionist watching this, it was probably like, absolutely no carbs it was just like (laughs) salad and chicken and peppers and onions and Mm -hmm. yeah it wasn't too exciting but got got the job done yeah Yeah. yeah, when you were at the heaviest though were were you able to break a backboard i don't even know if i was getting up there to grab the rim to be honest (laughs) oh no the devil dogs were keeping you down (laughs) that's one thing i miss about basketball like when we were growing up once every six months somebody would shatter a backboard or just like pull it down onto the ground and now it's like the, the technologies to yeah the to break, advance breakaway rims yeah Shit. we're gonna get back to george and yang in a second but before we do i want to talk to you guys about ebay ebay is changing the game once again for buying and selling sneakers online from rare dead stock to the latest release or even carefully loved pre-owned kicks i've got some great shoes that i'm excited about i got my kamikazes ready for the summer the old sean kemp's hank what sneakers do you have that you're excited about I'm always looking for some uh, for some nice SBs, SB Dunks. Okay. Yeah, I bet you could find some on eBay sneakers. Yeah, I've, I've looked and got some there before. And sometimes when you're looking for a specific pair of shoes, you're always wondering, are these going to be the real deal? Are they going to be Fugazi? Well, when you buy with eBay's authenticity guarantee, you can rest easy knowing that everything, including the box they came in, is 100% legit. With millions of sellers across the globe, the drops never stop. eBay sneakers, authenticity guaranteed. And now here's more George Nyang. What um? All right, so here's another one. I like to look up old tweets that I have whenever I have a guest on. You got some for me? Yeah, I have one that just says, "says January 30th, 2016." Um, it's actually my birthday. Uh, I said, "What are you doing, Nyang? So stupid." I went and looked it up. It was the Texas A&M game at Texas A&M. 
um, I must have bet on you guys, mm. so you fucked me. Yeah, um, fuck. Do you remember that game? What did you do? Did yeah. you make a big mistake? No, I think I might have turned the ball over late because I know you probably took the over. Yeah, and that us. too. Yep, yep. I was like, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, no. I was. I something about that really pissed me off. And then um, I, you did something else. I think it might have been the Buddy Healed, like that game where you guys both went off. Oh, we were going back and forth? Yeah, I think I had the- You said something mean to me I, no, again? No, I said something good. I was like, I love Niang, so like that that was a good one. All right, we're good. Yeah, we're yeah back so on. we're good on that. But <laughs> I, I do have – so Fred Hoiberg was your coach for the first couple of years. Yeah, three years. First three years. years. Um, and he obviously he, – he went to the Bulls, and I just remember being like, dude, he couldn't beat UAB. Why is he going – why why are the Bulls – Damn. So after that game where you like, hey, coach, you shouldn't – like we couldn't even get out of the first round of the tournament. We just won the Big 12. We beat Kansas in the Big 12. Yeah, I know. Which is it never happens. That might, did you guys know that he was eyeing something, or was it? Could you feel it? Yeah, I mean, so right when we lost, like I think he went and had like a heart procedure, so he like took off. Like, right, he wasn't there, and I mean, it got a little fishy. I mean, you hear like the stories coming out, and then obviously there's like one airport in Ames, and they're sending out reports like, oh, a private plane is taking off out of the Ames, Iowa municipal airport. It's like, oh, it's headed to Chicago, and you kind of had a feeling. Um, I always have thought super highly of Fred. Obviously, I would have been like, damn, I wish you would have stayed. Right. Um, but it also made me realize, you know, the NBA is a different beast. Because if you would have asked any of us, or any of us at Iowa State, we would have thought Fred was all world. He would have brought in a championship, Steve Kerr esque, you know what I right. mean? And then you kind of get to the NBA and it's like, it's tougher than it yeah. is. You know what I mean? Like dealing with the personality, like, Jimmy Butler and then you know all those other guys that were over there I mean it's it's not easy but I don't think I said Fred we couldn't be UAB I think it was because um I think I might have went like four for 19 that game Shit. but you probably tweeted about me then yeah too. I probably did like I, you, that was a, that was an fat upset piece of shit get back on deep. <laughs> stop eating devil dogs yeah. did Fred Hoy I know what you did last night <laughs> did Fred Hoiberg ever show you guys like clips of animal house or wedding crashers because he did that with the bulls Titty, that was yeah. the moment I think it was all falling apart when it was Titty like show like the titty part where yeah, they're like all falling he, on the bed. I just remember there was a story where it was like the Bulls locker room was like fracturing and he was like, Watch this clip from Animal House guys, like this will fix it. Which is a very college coach thing. Yeah, do. that's the Iowa he Yeah, because right college there. like uh, what's a di like a college coach versus an NBA coach, I would imagine a college coach is a lot more like not forgiving, but you know, actually like close with you whereas the NBA is it just strictly business yeah I mean it's you ain't hanging I mean unless you're really close with someone you ain't really hanging out with them you right know? like you do we show up do our job leave college it was like we're gonna grind at 6 a.m. do all these suicides and pointless lifts and go home and drink a couple beers and yeah eat together and hang out with chicks how does that work with with the workout schedule I would imagine that with what uh, in the NBA? Or yeah, what? yeah, in the NBA and in college, because if you you know if you do like bench press or you do something that like works out your shoulders or triceps, you can't shoot around after that, right? Do you have to give yourself like a day after a heavy lift? No, that's that's what college kids say. I I don't know if this is like news, but like we lift before before games. Like sometimes guys will lift before games. See, that seems it. It seems like it would mess up your whole coordination. I mean, I think once you just get into like a rhythm, I know what you're saying where you're like, oh, I do like so much on the bench press. I probably I bench try, a lot more than you. I so like when I do that, then I step on the court, my shot's all off. That's probably what my Yo, issue that, is. is that, do you really believe that? How much do you bench? Uh, 135, uh, like 10 times. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, okay. you, you, no, I can probably. Had, we've all had that feeling, right? Like if you work nah, out, then nah. your shoulders are fatigued. And it's hard yeah, to yeah, shoot. yeah, no. There is a bench right there. Yeah, there is. Really? Yeah. I was That's just warming up on this earlier today. Really? Is that 225 right there? That's uh, 185. How much can you pinch off there? 10, 12. Oh, you might have me. <laughs> no. Uh, but no, back to your question. Yeah, friggin'. I think that was like a huge thing for me in like high school and college. I'd be like, I'm not going to lift two days uh, before like a game or anything like that. And then when you're young and coming up and the strength coach is like, shut up, you're, <laughs> you're lifting right now. And then they put you in a game and you make a shot. You're like, oh, maybe it's not so bad. Yeah. It's probably just an excuse that, that we but have. But we don't lift like as like we don't lift heavy. It's more like getting your muscles moving. Like I wouldn't say like football is like fucking scream, yell, yeah. ACDC on and you're just fucking crushing right. it. Basketball is more like uh, twenty pound dumbbells, 
yeah, ja- yeah, right. yeah, it's functional. Yeah, it's right. functional. Yeah, it's functional, functional like for. flexibility, toning. right? Yeah, you're yeah. toning. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I have one one complaint about you. Um, well, maybe it's not a complaint. Maybe you would have been drafted higher if you had a different nickname, though. Oh, you don't like the minivan? The minivan. That wasn't my nickname until I was already in the NBA. Okay, so how did you get the nickname the minivan? So, so It's a great nickname. It fucking, I got in against the Brooklyn Nets and I wasn't really playing much so I got in and there was like an opportunity for like I had a wide open lane and, I, and I'm like a one footed jumper I don't jump off two and dunk it so I tried to go off two and dunk it and like my hands like barely got over the rim and laid it in and Joe Ingles the biggest shit talker in the NBA is, was, I love that. was one of my teammates and we got in the locker room he was like what the f- was that and I was like what you, you didn't like that? he was like no, that was absolutely disgusting. Like, that was terrible. And I was like, all right, all right. I was like, I'm not you guys like fucking Ferrari engines running around. I'm more like a minivan. I need a couple laps around the block before I get to top speed. And then I saw the reporter was like, oh, the minivan. And then next thing you know, people in Utah didn't even know my name. It was like, minivan. I'm like... <laughs> This is fun. It's actually it's a, great it's a perfect nickname, nickname yeah. for jazz fans. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Philly, really not up. so much. Yeah. They're yeah. like, fuck you and your minivan. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it fucking hate minivans. Yeah, exactly. I never want to ride in your minivan. <laughs> <laughs> who's the uh, Who's the craziest player that you've maybe not even played against, but like seen? You know, maybe you weren't playing like guarding him, but like the one guy you when you've watched him live and you're like, this is just different than everything else. <sighs> I mean, there's a couple, right? I would say Brad Beal's up there. Really? Yeah. Okay. How well, so? Well, so when we were at the Jazz, they were like, Brad Beal, you know, you go over the scouting report, they're like, Brad Beal's on minute restriction, you know, so he's probably not going to play too much. We're going to force him right. And uh, we, because I guess going left, he's better going left. And he was on minute restriction, and he had like 30 points in 25 minutes, and he was going whichever way he right. wanted. He, we were forcing him right, he was going right scoring. We were forcing him left, he was going left. And then, you know, you have, like, the KDs, the LeBrons. Um, What's a guy that maybe we don't think of that's, like, you know, when you when you see him play, you're like, damn, he's, his uh, game is sick. Uh, well, I mean, I got to play alongside Jordan Clarkson, so that yep. was one where – but that's a, that's a pretty good question. Thank you. Uh, Great question. Thank you. You know, I might say Anthony Edwards. He's, uh, he's impressed me with his just – overall athleticism and then just the the way he like carries himself like the shit he says yeah i i I think he's uh he's a great shit talker yeah yeah he's got a dog on twitter that talks shit for him during the games did you see uh the movie hustle i haven't yet i got to he was pretty good yeah but yeah no i'll I'll give anthony credit could you tell can you tell like right away if you're watching someone play basketball like all right that guy can like like within like the first minute like okay that guy is He's different than everyone else. Or right. He's you know a real like baller. Just like his fluid motion and how they move. Yeah, I think you could you could definitely. Yeah, you have an eye for talent. You know. How yeah, I can is. tell easily. Yeah, I think you're okay. You can I, maybe make a team. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> some things I need to improve on. <laughs> Actually, speaking of which, um, in if you go on Google, uh, let me pull it up. By the way, that Oklahoma uh, versus Iowa State game, I was happy because I don't. One of your teammates hit a three. A buzzer beater three when it was the, when you guys were down eight, and they covered the spread. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I yeah, think. and I don't know if like you guys are ever aware of that stuff, but it matters. Yeah, I had it money, matters. I had money on it. That's why. I like the money. <laughs> Clip that, it doesn't, put that out there. Yeah. It doesn't matter, right? With nil guys are getting like freaking. Oh, a how million pissed anyway. are you oh. that you you would have been an nil beast, man? Because you were one of those. You were one of those guys who, uh, you know, by the time your fourth year rolled around, it was just like. This fucking guy's still here? Yeah, because you know, like every like older white male that had was had like a bad body and played basketball, like they saw a little <laughs> bit of themselves in me. Yeah, so like that means that, they would have yeah. paid me. But you yeah, know no, I mean? you yeah, you stay like you were you were part of that team. Like there's always those guys in college basketball who are good, but because they were good right when they started, like freshman year, yeah. you feel like they've been there for like eight years. Yeah, it was like me and Perry Ellis. Yeah, mm-hmm. right, exactly. So you would have you would have cleaned up on on. I would have. I would have. It would have been, damn. Whatever. Yeah. My Are mom you, had me a little too early. Yeah. All right. So the, what I was gonna say was, uh, if you search on Google, people also ask. There's just a question: Is George Niang good? <laughs> That's literally the question, and it's just yes. Niang is a below-average <laughs> defender. 
as he currently ranks 203rd out of a possible 251 players, according to 538. But his overall total Raptor, what the fuck is that? That sounds sick. Is tied yeah. with Bam Adebayo for 53rd league-wide at a very healthy plus 2.9 with a war rating of 9. Yeah. That ranks third on the team behind Andre Drummond and Joel Embiid. Shit. That's pretty good. Dude, you got a sick Raptor. You have yeah. an awesome Raptor. Fucking you should be, you Raptor. should be the Raptor. Top 60. Yeah. The minivan rap. <laughs> that kind of hurts, yeah. though. Yes, Niang is a below-average defender. Well, that, who wrote that? They don't that's, pay me to play yeah, defense. Google wrote it. Five thirty-eight. That's no, Nate Google Silver, wrote it. But it's from five thirty-eight. Yeah. That's Nate. That's a nerd. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. never seen a basketball. You that's didn't know? Saying. Did you know that your Raptor was so good? No, I don't even know what a Raptor. I have no idea either. Right but behind but Bam. if I'm Bam out of bio, I know he makes a lot of money. So you know, I mean, yeah. Uh, let's get yeah. the total Raptor. Listen, your agent should be going in just page one of the <laughs> exactly. of the pitches. Look at his raptor. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, do you do you like playing in Philly? I love it actually. Like you, the fans, because some people don't like the Philly fans. We love the Philly fans oh, because yeah. they're like you were you were talking about them earlier. Be like, oh, get your fucking minivan out of here. Yeah. They're they're mean, but they're funny and they care. Yeah, I mean that's the best part. Like, why would you want to play for uh, a city that is just like uh, about what you do? Like, they actually really like give a shit and I can I feel like I've, I'm able to look myself in the mirror and be like you know what I did suck you know what I mean so I, I do need to be better so it, all that shit really doesn't bother me and I think it's hilarious when they get going on like t on like Twitter or in the stands it's oh it's it's pure comedy every night but like you said I can appreciate it because they do care because it is like that electrician that makes 95k a year that's bringing his son for you know the one two games he's there he wants to see you perform you know right. what i mean he doesn't want to see you play like shit so it's like or not play ben simmons yeah except mm -hmm. great valid point it's, <laughs> yeah. been, it's been almost a year and a half since he's touched the court hasn't it <laughs> yeah but until Damn. he plays somewhere else he's going to be a sixer like i still think of him yeah. as being a sixer yeah. yeah they gave away the number 25 the guy we just signed who i think daniel house oh okay yeah so so a it's lot of, new a lot era. Of, yeah, hey, yeah. new era of Turn 25. Yeah. Update, those, update those jerseys. I also appreciate that you you are a very uh, honest uh, NBA player and you have a little self-deprecation. I read the quote where you said, the biggest thing for me was being able to use my deceptively slow speed to my advantage. So you think it is an advantage to be slower than everyone? Absolutely. How so? Because everybody's used to these dudes being so fast and when you change it up and someone goes slow like it's tough to go from fast to slow <laughs> you're, mm -hmm. you're People, the human off speed yeah i was pitch. gonna say these guys are so used to going from stopping to completely full speed but if i hit you with a six mile an hour <laughs> you're not ready for it that's like tim wakefield in the knuckleball yeah. they're used to 95 95 95 and then he comes in the next day and is throwing 63 and 61 and like Moving all over the place, my body's sliding here. <laughs> well, also, you really you, are the minivan. Yeah. You're, you're 10 miles per hour must look like 20 miles per hour. Like when you when you turn it up a little bit. Yeah, I was gonna say it feels like it on my yeah. knees. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> oh man, that's uh, I I like the fact that like slowness can deceptively can, yeah slow. deceptively slow. You're slower than you look. Slowness yeah. kills. Yeah. yeah. Slowness Yo, kills. Yeah, we I need to get that on a T-shirt. Yes, that's not yes. bad. Have you? I I I know there's a lame question, but I ask every like basketball player this: yeah. Have you ever been in the zone? What's that? Like the shooting zone, like where everything you shoot, oh, yeah. you hit. Yeah, one time. What was this it? one time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we. Uh, I'm obsessed with the idea that like a basketball player could just be on the court and. Everything they, they shoot just goes well, in. Well, we were playing Charlotte, I think it was at home, and when I was in Utah, and I went like seven for seven from three in like 16 minutes. And literally, it was like, the first time I got in the game, the ball came to me like two, three times, and I shot it. And they went in, they felt good, and then the third one, it was like, someone threw it off to me, and I just threw it up there, and I'm like, oh, fuck. And I like went in. And then the next one, I was, you know, went in again, and the second half, I ended up having three more threes, but it was like, I was so lock, locked into what I was doing, it it didn't matter. The only problem is, is I didn't touch the ball enough for me to get 30, you know what I mean? Yeah, if that would have been nice. I was in that type of zone. You're on pace for 30. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm obsessed with the idea that, like, how cool of a feeling that would be to just be like, everything I shoot's going in, no matter what. Well, that was the one time I was in the zone in an NBA game. Like, when I go to the YMCA, I'm always in the zone. Yeah, because you guys can... You guys yeah. just make every shot. Yeah, exactly. If I were you, I would show up to the YMCA all the time. All the time. 
I'd be like, oh, I'd like have a stupid mustache on, like the worst disguise of all time. <laughs> yeah. And then I'd just get out there and just put 50 on him. Yeah. Sh- I should dress up as like a female yeah. and then do it, really mm-hmm. throw just them start off. just fucking dunking on people. <laughs> well, no, you can't dunk, so... I guess that part would Yo, be. man. <laughs> Sometimes. But it is crazy. Whenever I see an NBA player in an open gym and they just make like 25 in a row, yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. You're like, he's going to average 30 this year. And they're like, oh, he <laughs> averages seven. <laughs> do, do you like selectively pick and choose what clips you're going to put on your Instagram? Like rise and grind. Here's me at Lifetime Fitness. Yeah. And then like the good angle too. And then like sometimes I ask a couple girls I know like what filter they use uh-huh. to make like their hips look It's smaller. a very important part of it the is. NBA offseason. <laughs> no, for real. It is though. It is. It's become I'm telling one. you, percent. Perception is everything. Like, people don't understand that. Like, you friggin' looked apart. Someone, you know what I mean? And people don't think Instagram does anything. But if you looked apart, people think, like, you're it. You'll probably get paid a little more than someone who's yeah, yeah. not looking the part. Yeah. So in the off season, do you have, do you have like, tweet alerts on for Woj and Shams and all those guys? Yeah, for sure. So I just actually got one. And it's crazy that you're here because the Sixers are very close to signing Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell. That'd be impossible because he's already under contract. Trading for him. Oh, who, I mean, am I going back to Utah? No, no, they haven't said like who's who's going to be dangled out You're going to cut. But the fact that Harden <laughs> didn't I, take... Hey, can I get that spot in the middle right there with the bench press? <laughs> the fact Harden didn't take the max means you guys can get under the max guy. And so it looks like Looks like Mitchell might be. All right, Adrian Wojnarowski, pipe down over there. I'm just making all this up right here. <laughs> <laughs> this, is all, this is all completely false. <laughs> That would be, yeah. Because, I mean, that does have to, when you see everyone moving around. Oh, man. That's like, the, the especially like draft night, you're calling your agent like, hey, do you think I'll be good? And they hit you at a line like, I think you'll be good, but you know how this business works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like, it's that's like, pretty much translation. Fuck, you're fucked. Yeah. 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 You're fucked. Have you ever been in a Woj bomb? Yeah, honestly, when I got cut from the Pacers, Woj said, you know, like, George has been waived from, George Niang has been waived from the Pacers. And, Spelled my name wrong. Oh, I was like, "Damn, I really am a buster." Oh no, that's bulletin board material, though. Yeah, that is. Like he yeah. knows that there's an S on there now. Yeah, yeah. and then he does. And I told him <laughs> that it pissed me off. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you also were in Utah when Rudy Gobert gave everyone COVID. Was that awkward? That was. That was. <laughs> I actually at the time because we all all didn't know what was coming. I think we defended the move. We're like, that's fucking funny that he touched all the microphones. Honestly, <laughs> it, it now that I think about it, it was a boss move. But to say it back then was like, no, it was bad. You were <laughs> like, bro, you did that and you had COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Are you fucking nuts? <laughs> that was the day that sports just stopped. Yeah, dude, the world shut down. Like, who would have ever thought that? Like, I remember telling someone, I was like, there'll never be a day when sports stops. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and then next thing you know, it's like. I have a buddy that gambles that, you know, hangs out with me, and he was, like, betting on, like, Ukrainian soccer. Oh, yeah. back. It was, like, that's the only sports I wanted. It literally was, like, yeah. shut down. But back to the Rudy Gobert thing, that was uh, that was funny because uh, I ended up going to have dinner at his house the night after we – or the night of we played Toronto at home. And I was eating dinner with him after the game, and we were talking about him coming in before we flew out to Oklahoma City, and he friggin' – he comes in late and was like, yeah, I wasn't really feeling that well. That's why I came in late. Mind you, literally two days before, we had someone from the CDC come and be like, if you're not feeling well, don't come in. Yeah. Like, call someone. And uh, so he comes in and he's on the plane and he's like sweating. Oh, no. And uh, and I think like all of us thought like you could have a common cold. Yeah, there. no one knew. Yeah. Yeah. And then so we get down to OKC and someone was like, yeah, we're going to go up there and, and see what Rudy has. He's, he's been under the weather and they test him. And, uh, the next day he doesn't show up for shoot around and Jordan Clarkson's running around, shoot around and be like, Rudy got that shit, yo. He got that shit. I know he got that shit. So then there, we were getting ready to go to the game and he's not there. And literally it was like men in black. We're getting ready for tip off. They do the starting lineups and like five guys in suits run on the court. And it's yeah. like, what the fuck? That was and, crazy, and then crazy. They night. told us, and I was like, "What the hell, like, just happened?" And then I figured, like, we were gonna get back in two weeks. Like, everybody was like, "All right, two week hiatus, we'll be back." What was it like? Three months later, was, in yeah, a whole bubble. In bubble. Yeah. I mean, Let me tell you, the bubble. Would it suck? Oh, I we, mean, they did a great job, but it sucked. That was a long time to. to I be always thought it would be fun, dudes. but you were just ha- you were just stuck in a hotel room, so I guess that wouldn't be fun. I mean, after the you did the same five activities, the pool. 
uh, the dining hall, golf. So that means, correct me if I'm wrong, like the first three days was like, this is awesome. Yeah. And then after like a week, you're like, wait, yeah. this sucks. No, I mean, after a while. After, I would probably say after like two, three weeks, it was... Uh, it was a grind. Yeah, I was like, I'm good. Yeah, but well, it's a Mickey what? Mouse bubble anyway. Yeah. Anyone who won in that bubble doesn't count. Ooh. If I, I won a ring, would you say that to my face? No, yeah. Yeah. Well, if I, you were on LeBron James' team, yes. If you won a ring on the Jazz that year, <laughs> yeah. no, we would not say that. Yeah, that would yeah. say that was the hardest the championship one ever. ever. Yeah, yeah. For what sure. you guys did was incredible. You guys are better than Stockton and Malone <laughs> ripped down their But the nation too. needed that. We needed that. We needed a bubble tournament. Yeah, thank, you for, your thank, you. thank you, you for your service. You've done right. an we're enormous here. service yeah. to this country. We're here yes. for you guys. But yes. how many shots were guys making back then, huh? It was awesome. Yeah. When, when like The first couple days, one was like, wait, this is like the greatest shooting gym ever. That was so sick. Oh my god! Yeah, guys couldn't miss. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wish I was in a contract here. In then. just in the bubble. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When you look back at what Rudy did, though, he he might have saved thousands of lives by getting by being like the first person to have coronavirus publicly. Yeah, and to like look like he was spreading it around. They shut down the league. They shut down you know all fans coming into games. Probably saved maybe even more. Maybe tens of thousands of lives. <laughs> I don't know. You can spin zone it that way. Yep. Yeah, I'm if gonna say spin, it. if you spin it like that, you know, for my guy Rudy, I'll say thank you, Rudy, for saving. Yes, saving yes. tens mm -hmm. of thousands of lives. Um, all right, so I had one last question for you, George. It's been awesome. We appreciate yeah, you coming no. in. You got to come in next time you're in town. Um, so it's the rollback question. R h o b a c k dot com. Use code take for twenty percent off your first purchase. Rowback dot com. Use code take for twenty percent off your first purchase. Q zips, hoodies, everything. Um, so you are you 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 follow Barstool. You know some of the guys here. Yeah, absolutely. Are you are you Team Hank or Team Mush? No, that wasn't a real question. I was because I, I know he friends with Marty. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that to you. <laughs> Yo, I don't I even I don't even really know what happened there. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do that not to important. you. It's all in yeah. the past. My real question was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you like that, right? <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, by the way, Hank, kind of a pussy move from Hank. He talks a lot of shit about Philly. And he's just not here right now. Really? Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, then he's I gotta number be team one enemy. Mush. Then I gotta be team Mush. Yeah, he's now. number one team <laughs> Marty, enemy. Marty, you know I got you, bro. You're, I'm on your podcast next. Uh, Eight black, right? Eight black on his gambling. Um. So no, you you when you got drafted by the Pacers, you got drafted by Larry Bird, yeah. and he gave you a compliment. Was that the coolest moment oh, of your life as a Boston kid? <laughs> like you 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 I got like Larry training. Bird, yeah, to say yeah. he's good. Yeah. No, I was. That was the greatest thing that could probably ever happen to me up to date then. Um, and then he cut you. Yeah. But life goes on, right? I don't, <laughs> why you always got to look at the negative shit? Huh. Uh, no, but it was, it was, that was awesome. That was great. And, um, you know, the year that I had there, I actually learned a lot from him. And he's a no bullshit type of guy. If he doesn't have anything to say to you, he will walk straight past you. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when he does have something to say, I think it's, it's meaningful and it's helpful and he was great to me and always has been and I'll always be thankful for my time in Indiana and, and that he drafted me because he didn't have to do that that's for sure and yeah so I appreciate him that's awesome so what's next for this year what are your goals for this year win a championship you know no okay. meet Lenny Balls <laughs> yeah <laughs> met him enough yeah <laughs> <laughs> in the same t-shirt every single time yeah. <laughs> at least he's wearing a shirt <laughs> yeah facts <laughs> Um, no, I think for me is just to continue to grow and take my game to a whole new level. Obviously, right now in Philadelphia, um, you know, we're trying to win a championship now. So obviously making sure that I do my part to make sure that all of my eggs are in a row to make sure that we can win a championship and be, you know, effective for this team. And, you know, like I said, just have another great year. I think the, this year in Philly was huge for me and I took a big leap in my career. So to have that you know moving forward would be huge for me that's cool. awesome yeah we're yeah. fans now yeah hell yeah yeah hell Fuck. yeah Thank Yang gang. Yes. Yeah. yes yes <laughs> Niang gang. minivan that's dude niang gang niang gang's good you like can, that what, yeah. can i get you a t-shirt with that on the front and minivan yeah. on the back yeah yes. we'll, no, we'll, yeah. Put, we'll put niang gang on a minivan that's what we got to do. Yeah. Yo, yeah. You guys are up to some sick shit. Right, no, we always like, would I, sell that. I yeah. did a complete 180 on the minivan nickname. After you explained yes. it, like it's <laughs> it's 
probably the best nickname in the NBA. It's, right. here, it's here to stay. And yeah. the fact that you admittedly are deceptively slow, like that's a minivan. But it, <laughs> know, gets, you, it gets you places. Know thyself. Yeah. That's also, the biggest key. Yeah. Minivans are great. Yeah. yeah, like they've got DVD players and shit in them. You've got probably not even DVDs anymore. It's probably next level. But yeah, like yeah. It's, it's Dude, comfort for the whole there, family. Yeah. They get the job. They get the job done. Yeah. yeah, they'll get you there at sixty-five miles an hour. Yes, exactly. All right. Well, thanks so much, George. Right. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. George and Yang was brought to you by our great friends over at Sling, and they are bringing you Firefest of the Week. That's right. Here we go. Firefest coming right up by our good friends at Sling. Sling lets you stream on-demand movies live TV shows, and live sports instantly on your favorite devices. What you want, where you want. I love watching the Brandon Walker show on Sling. It's incredible. Great TV. Brandon Walker always delivers. With Sling TV, you get to choose the television option that's right for you, including channel add-ons. You get premium add-ons, DVR+, and more. Right now, you can get all that for half the price using during during your first month. So less than 18 bucks, which is lower than any other streaming service right now. We love Sling. If you're worried about where to watch F1 race on July 24th, sign up at Sling. Catch it on ESPN. You can watch live sports on Sling. Whatever, you, whatever you're into, Sling is where you can find all the TV and all the sports that you love all in one place. Go to sling.com slash barstool. Sign up now. Try it for half price. During your first month. That's right. Less than $18. Half price during your first month. Only when you go to sling.com slash barstool. Firefest of the week by Sling TV. Okay, let's wrap up. We got Firefest. Thank you to Sling. Uh, Hank. My Firefest actually it's synergy. I have a Sling uh, part of my Firefest. Really? Yeah. I'm going I'm to I'm take you guys on a journey. This is an actual Firefest. Okay. okay. Buckle up. All right, everyone, just do it. You secure everything around you. Nail Here down the go. dog. All right. I don't know why Billy's giving me this look. <laughs> he's, get, he's getting on the edge of his seat. Let's do it. Let's ride, Hank. Moved in Monday. Moving sucks. Everyone knows that. Never fun. Took all day. Got everything in the apartment. Hadn't unboxed anything. Uh, just went to sleep after it all got in. Tuesday comes, we were here super late because the All-Star game, so we, you know, we got home at like midnight, maybe 1 o'clock. No move. big deal, we grind. Yeah, didn't move anything, but, but obviously like I was here for, for 14 hours. I wasn't about to go home and unbox and like put stuff away. Right. Uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday. And and also, with that being said, I also don't know where anything is. Like I'm like, like I'm waking up in the morning, like I'm just trying to do my thing. Called, turn the heat on. Wait. Turn the hot water on. Ah. Uh it didn't get turned on, so I didn't. I didn't shower for two days, uh, uh, and it was hot. Yeah. Did we know that? No. I knew. I could tell. Yeah. No, you don't. I don't smell. Um. So and and then like trying to find stuff. That's why I'm wearing flip flops in New York City because I just like can't find. I don't know where my socks are. I don't feel like going through the process of figuring where they are. So I just throw my flip flops. But then I'm like getting looks at like why are you wearing flip flops in well, New York City, <laughs> which is a valid valid criticism. But I'm and doing you're it. you're corporate and you're wearing flip flops. Right. It's summer. Whatever. Um, it's such a corporate move to have the boss be like. No one's even. You no, guys no, no, have to look at my feet. No, all the day. corporate people are, are fucking. What's the Panthers I would, owner? I, I was really That's corporate. I, I, if I was yeah. really corporate, no, no, I would, the I would new, be the old on one, Jerry Richardson. Vacation for oh, this whole year. Yeah, Hank's Jeans making Friday. everyone Friday, go yeah. fucking flip flops Tuesday so we can look at chicks' feet. Let me see them toes. Mm -hmm. Not a feet guy. Anyway, Wednesday, I'm like, yeah. all right, finally, <laughs> <laughs> finally, it is a power thing. We'll be done with work around five. I can go home, move all my shit in, get ready to go. I take the train home, get off the path for what, and like sometimes I I fell asleep for literally like we got stuck in the in the tunnel. I dozed off for maybe three minutes, but we finally get there. I kind of wake up, oh, get up, get off the train, check my pockets, realize I don't know where my keys are. I sprint back downstairs. As I'm sprinting back downstairs, the train's pulling away. So they might have fallen out of my pocket on the train, but I don't know that. So Whoa. I go back to the office. Get back on the train. Did you take a nap on the way back? Nope. I was at this point. I'm wide awake, like panic, like oh my god, this is gonna this is gonna suck because it was it was my keys and my spare keys both on the same set. I just hadn't even taken them off yet. Get back to the office. Retrace all my steps. Nowhere to be found. Multiple conference rooms. Multiple meetings. You guys know what I have to do on a day to day basis. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm just everywhere all at once. I'm checking everywhere. I'm checking the studio. Checking by your desk. Checking the pile. Checking all the conference rooms. We were in uh, a, the place next door doing a commercial shoot. I had to get the keys for that. I check in there, not in there. Come back, realize I was sitting at the rundown chair. 
So I go over there. Uh, the rundown chairs had gotten moved into shoegasm. So I had to go back into shoegasm. I'm fucking, and I'm sweating my balls off at this point. But you got flip flops on. Yeah, I do have flip flops on. No, I was wearing actual shoes yesterday. Oh, nice. Um, I'm like rustling around in the chair. I can hear keys, but Where they're the like. Where did flip flops come back into the story? I just. Don't worry about well, it. Well, I thought he was sweating. I was like, well, you couldn't have been sweating that bad. You had flip flops on. No, I was sweating my dick off. The, the flip flops, that was just. Just a, a little bit of flavor for the story. Well, right. it was just like, yeah, I don't, I, I just didn't, I don't know where, like. He's wearing them right now. Yeah. Do you use the bottle opener on the bottom after Duh. walking around Manhattan? Duh. <laughs> um, I'm rustling around in this, in this fucking recliner. I can hear keys. I can hear keys. I'm like, they're in there, but they're like, the, the chair's broken. They they'd fallen them. underneath, yeah. and I'm like, it's, it's, it's literally just a struggle. Like, I'm. What time is this? This is like seven o'clock at this point. Seven thirty. Finally, I finally reach, get the keys. They're a set of keys. They're not my keys. <laughs> and I literally, like, it was in shoe guys. I was just like, fuck! And just, like, threw the keys at the wall. Whose keys are I don't they? know. I picked them up. I brought them. I gave them security. But clearly no one is worried about them. They're just a set of two keys. Then I had to call my I have to call my landlord, which is awkward, being like, hey, I just moved in. I fucking lost my keys. I'm an absolute joke. Uh, he sets me up with a realtor who has an extra set of keys. I go to meet him get the keys they're only the keys for my door but not my front door so i then had to go sit outside my apartment building waiting for someone to come thinking it was going to not take long it took an hour and a half what i was sitting there just watching pfts ghost of manhattan stream because i told him i was like i might stream after you i wasn't even in my apartment by the time he was finished so I left the office at four thirty. I got in my apartment at nine thirty. Oh my god, that sucks. That's a bad. That's a bad night. Did you have to pay for the the spare keys? I have to go. Am meet I gonna get my for other, that? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> probably gonna get evicted. Um, I have to go meet my landlord to get the front door keys, and I have to clone those, and then hopefully never lose them. <laughs> clone them. Hey, so hey. this is, this is your introduction clone to your landlord. Them. What else do you call? Copy them? Yeah, you make a copy of your key. Are those words not synonyms? <laughs> yeah, you clone them. <laughs> that's I like it. Listen, that's no a one's, synonymic no, word. No, no one's ever thought that you were like a college-educated guy. Yeah, world-renowned, educated <laughs> human being. Clone works. It's yeah. just I've never heard anyone say I got to go clone my key. <laughs> no, I like <laughs> that's it. That's what I have to do. <laughs> it's just fun. I have one, and I have to make the exact same. Correct. And have two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Clone. You got to use the DNA from the first <laughs> hey, and God. replicate it. Is that why you called me twice? Is I was calling you, you because because I called because I was at the office fucking like rustling through the the. He just wanted chair. to yell at you. And the, no, 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 the guy was like, uh, "All right, the guy has your key, but he wants to meet in ten minutes." And I was like, I'm fucking 30 minutes away. So I was going to call Billy to go meet him, but he didn't answer. That is a day that will, like, beat you up for a while. But I will say this. I finally get in my apartment. I'm like, I swear to fucking God, if this hot water's not working still, I'm going to cry. It worked. And I was able to get a nice hot shower. Nice. And that 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 did turn my mood around. I so, did, but And then I just played Call of Duty. I didn't move a single thing in. So I still haven't moved anything in in, so, in four days. Question. Did you have any other keys on that keychain? No. Ooh, that would have been bad if it was your car key. No, I hadn't. I hadn't even. Oh, I hadn't even gotten good. to that point yet. Okay. That's nice. Little shout out to Bird Dogs zipper pockets. Yeah. On the shorts and mm-hmm. the pants. I yeah. Well, now I'm just gonna start putting them in my uh, yeah. first in my thing, thing in the morning. That's where I was they go. Like, Don't take them out till the end of the day. I mm-hmm. was debating as I was sitting outside. I was like, I did meet uh, a woman that lives in my building the other day. Is she hot? Doesn't matter. Oh, um, sounds like she was. <laughs> no, it's not. You know, let's let's not do that, big guy. <laughs> well, you um, definitely wouldn't have brought her up. No, no, I would bring just her up. Just give us a cup if, size. If it was a man, if it was a man, I would have brought him up because I just met her as I was walking in. I was like, "Hey, nice to meet you." Blah blah blah. She told me what apartment. She asked me what apartment I was in. I asked her what apartment she was in, and I, in my head, I was like, "Should I just buzz her apartment and be like?" Can you let me in the front door? But yeah. that's too much for I'm the guy who it. hit on you yesterday. Mm. No, not that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I didn't want to be like a weirdo. Be like, hey, let me in. Yeah, right. Um, so I just waited. And that's brutal, dude. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Finally, someone ordered delivery. <sighs> that's you know what's really terrible is when you. Go I, it home got to the point the where the I was night. guessing the there was a pin for a delivery pin. And I just started guessing numbers. <laughs> 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 like maybe I'll just. Oh my it. god. Damn, Hank. Oh. Well, I don't know how to compete with that. No, that's yeah. brutal. Um, my Mount Rushmore is I got home from work a couple nights ago, and um, my key didn't work. Wait, your work. Mount Rushmore? Oh, sorry, yeah. my Firefest. I got home from work a couple nights ago, and my key didn't work. I brought the wrong set of keys home. But fortunately, what uh, kind the, of keys? the door was unlocked anyway, so I just went in. Mm-hmm. What I know, kind of I th- keys? I threw them away. 
<laughs> they're in the studio. I guess I picked up the wrong set. My Mount Rushmore is I thought I lost my keys, but they were actually just in my bird dog pants. Oh, man. Yeah. That, you must have been stressed out. I you was okay? for a minute, and I was like, nope, they're right here. Boom. No, my Mount Rushmore, thank you. Shout out Sling. What? My Mount Rushmore. I don't, <laughs> God damn it. You got me. Uh, my Firefest, shout out Sling. Um, I tweeted this, but uh, I just basically have to go through like the worst television shows with my son because he just hops around. I'm now stuck on this show called Super Wings. I want to just start a support group for anyone out there. Sling does have it for free, which is great uh, if you have a Sling subscription. It's a show about planes, talking planes. Yeah. And they have the... PFT's PFT's interested. The tagline is (laughs) always on time, every time. Uh And now my son repeats that. And I'm like, no, this is not how airlines work. Like, they're never on time. Who finances this? Yeah, it's fucked up because he's just walking around. It is, I will say, the one saving grace is it's very funny because, like, the names are regular names. There's, like, an airplane named Paul. There's one named Donnie. And it's just funny to hear my son be like, yeah, that's Donnie. Um, But someone in in the FAA or something is funding this, and I'm on to them because they're basically getting three-year-olds to be like, yeah, planes are always on time. This sounds like Mayor Pete propaganda. It's fucked Department up, Department of Transportation trying to get at you. And he says, that, like, he like he yells out the catchphrase as the show starts, and I'm like, what the fuck are we watching? Always on time. And I hate airlines, and they're just, yeah, they got me. You, get, they got you gotta me. start teaching them to say that's cap when yeah. they say always on time. Yeah. he. I should just give him a Twitter, well, no, Darren Ravel has his Twitter account, so never mind. I was gonna say he could just start tweeting at planes, but yeah, he's locked that up. I was fucking with Hank. My real, my real fire fest. Mount Rushmore. My real Mount Rushmore fire fest for this week. Uh, I was walking to Starbucks the other morning, and um, mystery water got me. Uh, that, you know that Starbucks dude. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. It's it's it's, it's actually like it's, there, it's a mystery water factory. It's hell getting inside. There. Correct. You walk through the door, and it got me. I was wearing my sunglasses. It dropped. Right between my eyes, yep. In between my sunglasses, and my face hit the bridge of my nose, and then just splattered everywhere like yep. a kill room in Dexter. Mm-hmm. My face was just fucked up with high velocity mystery water spatter. That is, I need you need an umbrella to go in and out of that Starbucks. It's the worst. It's terrible. Mystery gotta, water city in New York is is awful. I got smoked by it by the other the other day. So now I have monkeypox. Yeah, there is a huge puddle though right there. Yeah, of yeah. All the mystery water. I know, so like you kind of. Well, it's probably an air conditioning uh, unit above it, but still, it's gross mm-hmm. to just get jizzed on. Nothing worse than catching that mystery water. Yeah. Greatest city in the world. Yep. Uh, so this fire fest is from uh, over suspension. I had a black eye for about. You had a good black guy. Name. Eye, black eye. Oh, when you talking about your body? Eye. No, black eye. Like okay. my eye. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, for about <laughs> three weeks, and uh, just you everyone fucked a black guy. Everyone uh, just assumes the worst uh, when you have a black eye. A guy playing basketball, and uh, I yeah. definitely assumed the worst. Yeah, well, it's fair. Yeah. Wait, can we talk about your shaved eyebrow now? That that show. Oh yeah, out? that was fucked up. Yeah, I had a shit. So I had to get a tattoo, and I shaved my eyebrow, and I still didn't win the game show. <laughs> but that shout was- out you. The hardest I've ever laughed is when you called me after, and you're like, "You have to pay for the tattoo removal," and I just <laughs> laughed so hard on it. <laughs> and yeah. also when you uh, joined a Zoom call one one time with PMT and forgot to fill in your eyebrow. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, dude, I had to fill in my eyebrow like every day. <laughs> But with, you like, forgot makeup. one time. Yeah. And we you know we were zooming in late, and I like <laughs> just showered, like because I got home and it was a post game or something. And then I was like, I totally forgot. Yeah, you had a black eye and a like an ankle brace on for a little bit there. Yeah, I twisted my ankle. <laughs> it was. It's. <laughs> you, you you're gonna learn. You, no, well, you're gonna <laughs> learn this, Billy. Like, it's I playing basketball is fun. I I miss playing pickup like all the time, but you definitely get. I guess barstool is not like this case because it's barstool. But I remember the first time I, like, twisted my ankle as an adult playing softball and had to wear an ankle brace. And I was like, do I have to stop playing this? Because you can't just, like, show up to an office job with injuries. I know. It's a weird thing to do. I, not I, here. Uh, Again, not here. I, I just saw your black guy, and I was like, oh, Billy, like, he probably ran into a black guy, and they made out. <laughs> hey, like, I don't know. Like, what happened? But, he, uh, but, yeah, like, when you have an injury in an office setting, it's very awkward. I used to have injuries constantly when I was in Austin because I was still playing rugby at the time. Yeah. And so I would come in with, like, my arm in a sling one week, 
And as a salesperson, it's like the worst possible thing because yeah. some they look at you and they're like, "What the? F I don't trust this guy with my money, right? Every, whatsoever." Everyone looks at you like, "What is this guy getting into?" Yeah, or it could be that you're Edward Norton from Fight Club, who's also the same person as Brad Pitt. That's badass. And th you just get fucked up because you're in a Fight Club every right. day, right? Mm. But yeah, Billy, I, I you kind of looked cool when you had the ankle brace as well. The ankle brace was embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. It's it like you look like, because you can't get a, because there's no like athletic trainer to go to anymore. So you can't get a boot. You just have to like do what you can at CVS. And you yeah. Just we should get a training room here though. Yeah. I Fun think, fact with ankle braces, you should really only wear it for like a day. Yeah. Because then it, then it weakens your ankle. Exactly. Learn that the yeah. hard way. Um, it turns out ice is bad. I'm actually going to write a blog on that. There's tons. Ice and cold is terrible for healing. Uh, no, no. I, it shuts down your inflammatory response, which actually is healing it. No, but it helps with the pain and swelling. But yeah. compression is better than ice. Okay, yeah, but yeah, ice isn't bad. Ice, but like it's bad for recovery. But like instantly after you injure yourself, ice is not bad. What do you mean by recovery? So like because it shuts down your circulation and circulation helps the healing. I was talking to Will Compton about it and I then went on a whole rabbit hole like trying to figure out what he was saying because he was just telling me ice is bad and I couldn't really get what he was saying. So then I like had your looks on your yeah, faces, yeah. looked it up. It's actually really fascinating. So in like ice is bad for like muscle gaining and like cold plunges are kind of good, but it's not good. But then good. you get, you, what about the acronym RICE? Yeah, rice is bullshit. Yeah, rest, ice, compression, compression and elevation. elevation. It should just be RCE. Okay. RCE, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. I, I look forward to that blog. Um, you can sway me on that. I You could definitely sway me on that. I mean, that's one of those things that you just learn that as, like, a kid when you get injured. Mm -hmm. And then someday, yeah, maybe, maybe Big Ice is trying to fucking keep us down. Uh, Jake. Yeah, so mine also has to do with keys. Coincidentally enough, this is real. You did okay. a key bump for the first time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was waiting for the elevator, took the keys out at my apartment, falls through no! the elevator slit. Oh, no. And I had to clone them oh, from a roommate. It was all fine. That's great. What are Dude, the odds, right? That is like the everyone thinks about it. It never happens. Yeah. Holy fuck. I think the only way that's worse if it's your phone. Is that... I've heard, of possible. It, I've heard of it happening. I've heard of it happening. I've heard of people The only way it could be worse is if it was your uh, great grandfather and he was trying to get the keys and the elevator fell in his head. That's true. R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, so that was crazy. Also, uh, one more plug. Big news. Oh, yes. Fuck. Yep. We should have said this from the top. PLL, one of the games, 5 o'clock, has been moved to ESPN2. We're ESPN back on two. ESPN. Yeah, ESPN. I love it. Yes. yes. We're, Jake is back on uh, ESPN2. So Saturday night, you got to watch it, 5 o'clock. And 7.30 ESPN Plus. ESPN Plus. I wish you guys had been in the room when he when it was just me, Memes, and Jake. And Memes and I were just like, we were evil geniuses. We're like, oh, ESPN 2? That's going to be a lot easier to make clips of. And we just both started laughing like, yeah, we're going to clip all of this. <laughs> yeah, so I'm thankful <laughs> and for this Jake opportunity. And Jake got super nervous. <laughs> Please tune in. ESPN and clip 2, it. 5 o'clock. Very and ESPN easy. Plus, 7.30. We have Redwoods Atlas on ESPN 2. And then Whips, Chaos on ESPN Plus. Are you right, nervous? So a little bit. We have to figure I'm out. We I'll have to ready. figure out like some, some little small Easter egg that we can put in for the AWLs who will be watching. How about we get <laughs> no whoever's playing really well? Yeah. At any point in the game, you'd be like, man, if we could clone this guy and have a team full of him. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Get a clone in there. Can you also can you give away your necktie at the end of the game? No. This to a kid. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Come on. I'm to not gonna kid? step on Jim Nance's toes. I don't think Jim Nance is gonna watch. Yeah, no, he'll watch. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Try to jersey swap. That was on our list too. What? Toast. Toast. Oh yeah, Jim Nance. Shout out Jim Nance. Bring jersey toast. swap with whoever you're announcing with after the broadcast, but while still on air. Oh, that'd be cool. I'm just focus on the broadcast, but I'm excited. I'm excited too. Should Jake. be fun. Please, I'm gonna tune watch in. it. I'm gonna clip it. Yeah. And we're gonna hear him say clone. I want to see the clips of you saying clone. You should work it in easily. That's a, that's a easy. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with yeah. that. If you could clone this guy. Yeah. Sup clones. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited. <laughs> should be fun. Okay. Um, great show. Reminder, Wednesday we got the takeies. Get excited. Uh, Monday we have a one of our longest interviews ever. Great interview with Andrew Schultz, comedian. Uh, really, really fun. And uh, hope everyone has a great weekend. Make sure you watch Jake on Saturday. Also, Patty the Batty. 
and uh, Molly the Meatball are both fighting. So get excited for that. Those are our those are our people. Big Saturday. They're our family. Mm-hmm. Our family. Uh, all right. My family. Seventeen. Twenty six. Six. I'm gonna go forty seven. Twenty seven. What'd you say, Hank? Seventeen. Eighteen and ninety nine are out. Fifty eight. Oh no, Hank. Hank, you're never getting this. <coughs> no, this you're never getting this time. shit. I'm not. Love you guys. There are two million rats in New York City and absolutely zero in Alberta. Hmm. Could never make the departed up there.